Right, welcome back to the Behind the Fish Eye podcast. Uh, just want to quickly say thank you for all the feedback I've received on the previous episode. I really appreciate it. Glad you're liking it. Uh, in this episode, we've got the very lovely Shane Auckland, aka Skate Rat, on to talk about growing up in a small town, stories about Corey Kennedy, Sibo Walker, learning about him working for the Barracks back in the day, back in like 2009, and also living with Steve Bearer back when he worked for the Barracks. Uh, we talk quite in depth about filmers' rights and the whole filmer union thing, uh, all spurred on by his post a couple of weeks ago, or a couple of months ago. And we also play a little game of Mastermind to test Shane's skateboard video knowledge. That was a mouthful. Anyway, I had a lovely time chatting with him, and I hope you enjoyed this episode. Oh, and uh, just before I forget, the reason why I may sound a little bit over it as the episode starts is because I'd already been talking to him and actually started the interview 20 minutes prior. The only problem is a very important part of the interview process is hitting the record button. So if I sound a little bit over it in the beginning, that's why. Anyway, enough about that. Enjoy the episode. Oh. Yeah. No, start, start from the beginning. I got, or hit me with whatever questions you think. I, I can totally repeat. Don't even worry about it. I mean, it'd be good if we can do it from the beginning. I just feel like such an idiot. God damn it. Oh, no, you're chilling. You're chilling. Don't even sweat it. <sighs> well, I can't I got, say congrats I, I again. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say congrats again. Okay, you're the first American on the podcast. This is going to sound so weird when I cut it in. Because it's like, oh, he sounds like he's already over it. <laughs> oh, no, no, don't worry. No, dude, we got this. Okay. We got this. Do you have any international filmers that you're hyped on at the moment? <laughs> International filmers, definitely this one guy, Ben from North Wales. He's a goat. <laughs> uh, he forgets to hit record. Uh, <laughs> but I would say French Fred. I definitely, we definitely grew up watching his videos a lot. And like his filming and editing just always stood out to me so much. Like his originality and what he brought to the table definitely, definitely stood out a lot. And we can't just, we can't gloss over the fact that he possibly came up with the frangle, the rolling yeah. long lens. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Just everything he brought, like it's just, I mean, I try to match my filming to like, I feel like a lot of kids don't do that these days. Everyone just tries to be strobeck. But like, I think of like Jason Hernandez, like Ty Evans, like French Fred, like just like the way they filmed. I watched all their videos so much. Like I, stri I feel like everyone should strive to like try to match the dudes who were like the best of the best. Like tr just keep trying to get there. And a lot of people just like stay at this like weird level these days where just sit there and just film long lens. Like there's like, and like no rolling, no rolling long lens or like trying to find a good like transition, like, panning from something like that's like doesn't exist anymore i mean maybe i'm generalizing too much i'm sure it does but i just feel like in the main media of skateboarding like doesn't really seem to be like a thing anymore which kind of bums me out because in a way it's like people are just kind of getting lazy but that's just my opinion on it i mean you could also you could use the excuse like oh well you know the extreme fish eye is too expensive you know so it's yeah. just cheaper to do long ones but yeah french fred filmed for the like the light later years of his kind of career in skateboarding yeah very rarely used fish eyes there's like exactly. lots of different creative angles and stuff. So I don't yeah think so it's... much long lens like so much yeah the dutch angle like just everything he was doing like yeah so it is possible but like yeah i feel like a lot of people are just kind of lazy i don't know it's it's an interesting time we're living in things have been changed and but hopefully it'll get better i'll keep hoping for the best <laughs> Yeah, I mean, from the people I've spoken to so far, I mean, there's a lot of hope that in the next couple of years, at least something new and fresh comes about, you know, just to kind of break up the stagnant feeling yeah, that yeah. all these edits have. Yeah, totally, yeah. So, on to the second question. This is def definitely the first time I've mentioned this. Um, <laughs> so, you're one of the few filmers who actually sells their own merch. Um, yeah. What made you decide to start selling kind of shirts and stuff like that? Pretty much like the backstory and all of that was like, I was 20, I was going to college, just doing like a little film program in Washington where I'm from and uh, dropped out because I got a job offer at the barracks, moved down, worked for the barracks for a few years. And I kind of had already like my skate rat YouTube channel that was a little popping off. And then I started like doing my own skate rats edits for the site because Solomon Alaga was our business manager at the time. And he would ask me like, what do I want to do here? And I was like, I want to film street like that'd be so sick. So I got I was able to start doing my own like skate rat segments for the site, like doing street stuff. And then I ended up parting ways with the barracks, had to get out of there. And at that point, I was like, I might as well just get skate rats trademark because we kind of, you know, gained a following from all this stuff going on over the, the years. Got it trademarked and then started like a little online store. And that was also in that era where Big Cartel and all those online shops were kind of popping off. So it made it pretty easy and just kind of started doing it from there. But it, just kind of ended up always kind of being like a smaller passion project. I've never got a business loan. I've never really dumped a lot of money into it. The money we've, we've not gone for the full Donald. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> just never really 
really took it off to which another level would was would have been kind of sick but like i was just kind of always it was always a struggle because it's either like i'm spending a lot of time on skate rights as a business or i'm going doing more time on filming projects it was like either one takes more of my time so it's kind of got a little tricky to balance the two and so i just kind of always kind of it's always just kind of stayed at this level state of it maybe sick to you know keep it going and take it to the net of another level but at the same time this industry and the way finances are and people like it just seems i don't know and especially living in la and here in the u.s like just the way everything is psychotic the like inflation with everything is nuts gas yeah. is six bucks a gallon like and like and i'm also so passionate to work in like an industry that has no money whatsoever so it's like <laughs> I'm, I'm just shooting myself in the foot but like but I, you know i just love skating love filming so much i'll just keep doing it as long as i can yeah i mean it's it's kind of, it's a curse, isn't it? In a way, yeah. Because you know, like you could have gone into like TV or film, and it's like yeah, there's exactly, at least money yeah. there. You yeah, know? yeah, <laughs> totally, totally, yeah. And that's like another predicament too, because like I do have a few buddies who do like some stuff in Hollywood or whatever, or like other guys who do like uh, art department, like building props and like stuff like that. And like Hollywood also just seems disgusting. Like yeah. guys working fourteen hours a day, you're slaving away. Like it just seems, and like also like. I just hear so many stories because I've done a dabbled a little bit within like some work like in that zone a little bit film stuff but like people just out there to stab you in the back like everyone's yeah. just looking at them for themselves and like people just care about themselves just so egotistical like and so at the end of the day it's like would I even want to like do video work in that industry it just seems so kind of chaotic and like and at, and at this point too like I've never really I don't really care about money I'd rather like just be kind of poor but still be happy at the same time instead of making a lot of money and but as just slaving away for an industry like it's kind of a weird predicament but maybe that's capitalism i don't know like it's just kind of the way the world is to an extent but <laughs> it's just, it, i just i want aliens to invade and just tell us what to do like you guys are so dumb like this is how you should be doing it because like humans are just so dumb in general guys let me tell you how to make free money <laughs> yeah exactly yeah <laughs> just some pyramid skin yeah <laughs> oh man that'd I mean, be sick talking of um rather being poor but you know doing what you want to do and stuff is like yeah, that. It's like, yeah. i feel I, I kind of that's how you do it that's kind of how you get i think true yeah, freedom yeah. in a way it's like being yeah. your own boss making yep. your own hours maybe not making the most money in the world but as long as you can put a shelter you know get a yeah. shelter get some food petrol in the car whatever it is yeah exactly yeah you're yeah. living it yeah this yeah simplicity i mean that that is the secret to life it's like people get so caught up in like all the ego and the money and the nice things, but it's like, dude, if you just live a simpler life, like you'll be happy for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And I think yeah. a lot of people, especially with like the trendiness of being kind of like flashy and all that yep. kind of stuff nowadays, I think that's quite important to learn. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Especially like the newer generation and stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so a bit of an odd question, this one, but um, yeah. How important is kind of the, personality side of a filmer do you think to being successful because you got the likes of like beagle who's quite a yeah. well-known character just outside of filming for like just how he is and whatnot like yeah yeah how important would you say that is kind of being quite a um just quite a unique character would you say yeah no i dude it's so important like i remember it was uh grant yanisir my buddy that owns weekend skateboards he was on he did nine club and i think that he said like the one of the most important things he's like it doesn't matter like how talented you are at filming. It's like just pretty much like how good you can kick it, which is like it makes so sense within the skate industry because like there's some people who make these videos. I'm like, really? They got assigned to that project and they're getting paid to do that. And then the video comes out. You're like, really? But it's just a matter of how good you can kick it or like how good you can buddy it up. And that's an interesting fact, too, because like it's it blows my mind that like the talent that people have, but you have to be able to like migrate like the social dynamic of it all too, like learn how to like because you kind of like have to be able to make friends with every type of person like yeah. either where this, there's a skater who's really extroverted or a skater that's really introverted who maybe doesn't like to film with a big squad so you have to do solo missions with that professional skater or sponsored skater or like the big squad skaters like you have to be kind of like a chameleon or whatever and like change your colors to be able to like migrate everything through the skate world as well and then not to mention like i swear skate filmers are like also low-key therapists like you're literally like in the trenches with a grown man losing their mind drenched in sweat and you're telling that dude like you got this next try like you're like hyping them up like like all this like psychiatry work so you have to like know how to migrate that zone as well and like 
be that like sunshine for the skater who's going through hell to battle this insane trick or something like that which is wild too and the awful thing is it might not even get used <laughs> yeah 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 and you spend all this time and it's like going through a war and like yeah the clip might not get used or like or if it, it's, or just, it's yeah. an insta clip <laughs> yeah or it goes on instagram oh. yeah which yeah it's it's such a weird time we're living in yeah it's it's funny i feel like people don't really think about that what filmers go through and like i like and like we don't have rights like i mean even to like i feel like people don't understand like if you're filming a professional skater trying to really good clip and like you're in the streets and then some like bum pissed alleyway skate in some random spot but like what if the filmer needs to use the bathroom like for one where is the bathroom like and then you've got and then at the same time like you can't you have to hold it like this you're not going to just interrupt this skater who's trying this trick who's like 30 40 minutes in and like hey let me like skate down to a starbucks like 10 minutes down the street to find like a public restroom like yeah. So you literally have like no human rights at, to an extent as well, which is kind of funny to think about in the stuff you go through. From the people I've spoken to who work like TV industry and stuff like that, they have a lot yeah. more freedom when it comes to like, hey, I just need to go for a break, yeah. go smoke yeah, a cigarette, yeah. whatever it might be. They have yeah, a yeah, lot yeah. more freedom. And even then it's still quite limited to like, yeah. hey, can I just like stop for a few minutes? You have a drink of water, you know, get a bit of a stretch. And like, no, mate, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of it. You know, it's like, yeah, totally. you can't stop. Yeah. No, you can't. Like, it's insane. And then and also the pressure of, like, the skater can mess up as many times as they want, but you have to film it perfect every single try because you don't know when they're going to land it. So you have all that stress on your shoulder as well. Like, you cannot blow it. And, like, that's something you have to learn to deal with as well if you want to become, like, a skateboard filmer or, like, try to advance yeah. in the career. Like, you got to learn how to deal with a lot of stress and a lot of patience. Like, filmers probably have the most patience in the world. <laughs> I had this, like, n just, like, the other week. I was out filming for the second time with the VX in like over two years. So I'm still like yeah. kind of getting, getting my grips with it again. Yeah. And I was yeah, filming yeah. the homie Sean, like on uh -huh. this massive ledge to like yeah. a bike rack. And he was doing like a nose grind. No, he's doing a crooked on it. And uh -huh. it's kind of a weird spot to film. Cause there was another kind of bike rack there. So it's kind of an awkward angle. And I was filming yeah, it fisheye yeah, yeah. lands it, but I kind of jolt. I kind of like, I don't know what the word, I kind of freaked out and just pulled out really way too far. I was like... Yeah, totally, I've been there, yeah. And I'm like, mate, I, I think I fucking ruined it. And yeah. I, I, was, I was so paranoid, I even like played back on the VX, like with yeah, the tape, yeah, yeah. I was like, I just yeah, have yeah. to see it. Yeah, I, I got to like, double check, yeah. I was like, oh fuck, this is... <laughs> you're gonna have to do it again. And he was so fucking bummed. And I was yeah, I, yeah. every time he, fe he fucked it up after that, I was like, oh my god, I did this to him. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I've oh. been there. It's the worst. Like, yeah, having like, hey, can you do it one more time? I'm so sorry, but just try it one more time. It's one yeah, thing it's, to like get yeah. it long lens, but then to actually just because you fucked it up, like, oh man. Yeah, yeah, no, totally. Yeah, it's it gets so stressful. Yeah, and I just, I just, yeah, it's interesting to like tell people that that don't know anything about skating or skate filming and like actually try to get a glimpse of what it is like under the hood, like what we go through to an extent. But, yeah, it's it's funny. I've had more bearable conversations with my boss for like uh -huh. messing up like some cutaway or some b-roll uh, yeah yeah then like telling a skater hey you may need to do that again because i'm not sure if yeah. the camera worked or i kind of fucking sucked at filming for some reason that one try uh -huh. you know? yeah yeah oh, man and even it's like and the filmer needs to warm up too like the skater warms up like filmer's got to warm up too you gotta like yeah which is funny because it's like the skater lands the trick first try you're like and in a way, you're like, oh, that's so sick. Like, we don't have to be here for, like, two hours. But then you're like, dang it, I'm not warmed up. Like, I maybe could film it differently. Maybe I could yeah. have found a different angle. Like, I could have experimented a little more. And then that's another weird predicament. Like, uh, can you do it one more time? <laughs> like, like yeah. I've been there before. That's a funny one as well. I kind of hate the first. I think I hate the first try. Yeah. Yeah, it's, like, almost like, yeah, it's, like, a double-edged sword or can something. Can you make like, it, like, yeah. 15 or 20? Because, you know, yeah. at least I can kind of get the knees going, you know, and all that exactly. stuff. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Damn. that's a funny one to think about as well. Yeah, <laughs> screw the first try. <laughs> Fuck it. I don't yeah, want it. no more first tries. <laughs> yeah, in the bin. Yeah. So compared to some filmers, you seem to be quite a lot more technical than at least the, some not on the podcast that I've spoken to, just like uh -huh. either on Slap or just on the internet in general. So yeah, it seems like a lot of people don't really know quite a lot about like video editing and cameras in general. How yeah. important would you say it is to be quite nerdy when it comes to kind of camera tech as a filmer? I think it's, I mean, it's definitely super important. Like 
And it's funny too that within skate world, like we all use such old tech, like we're still using VX1000, like even the HVX and the HPX, like that's still like all old tech. And then now we have like the digital recorders, you know, onto the VX, like that's old tech. It's funny how we hold on to like this old technology and it's so like so much value in our heads, but like in the real world, like that's like should be sold at a thrift store. Like, what are you doing with that thing? <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely, which is sick because it just shows like how much nerdy we are. And like, I think it's dope to be a nerd and like nerd out on things like that. And like, that's why I like have so much respect for you. Like when you did the deep dive on the HVX and the HPX, you're going through the manuals. Like I thought those were the sickest videos ever. Like oh, thanks, I back man. that, I back that stuff so much. I think it's super rad, but yeah, it's good to yeah have, I mean, know some, know some technology skills and all that stuff. It definitely will help like your, filming and your editing and just like making the best work you can make out of all that stuff mm. and especially if you like have aspirations to kind of go further than skateboarding you know like TV yeah totally. film is like very fucking important to know that yeah stuff. yeah totally yeah yeah i mean like where did you learn some of your knowledge about cameras and stuff then was it just through trial and error or like as you said yeah. college or i would definitely say a lot of trial and error like i grew up in a small town in washington state called machias like we're way out in the woods like bigfoot country and like i didn't have anyone to really learn from everything was just like trial and error like like my first little video i put out when i was probably like 15 called skate rides volume one like it's just like horrible like you know so many weird different cameras like editing in like i think i uh movie maker or whatever like on some dell pc my parents mm. had like that could barely even handle like mini dv footage like <laughs> it's like it's just it was uh it was insane like just trying to learn but I definitely want to shout out my good friend, Andy Froberg, who uh, is a couple years older than me, but he's from the same part of town where I'm from. And he taught me how to use the VX1000 and helped me get Final Cut. Like he showed me the ways on that. So shout out to Froberg because he definitely kind of got me into the zone of learning about these other cameras. Fuck yeah. Do you think he uh, kind of, would you say you're here today because of him or do you think? Yeah. For sure, definitely. Froberg definitely helped me out um, with all that stuff. And he's he's such a sick filmer, too. He's like a Seattle legend. Like, Froberg's the sickest dude ever. And shoots, like, great photos, too. Um, but definitely, where I mean, honestly, where I'm at today would be a big shout-out to Corey Kennedy. Like, we, he grew up he grew up in Lake Stevens, and I grew up kind of in Snohomish, but I kind of grew up next to Lake Stevens. And yeah. we, when we had first met, like, we just instantly clicked and started becoming friends and skating and filming, like, he was just such a freak on the board. Like he's, you know, he's one of those one percenters, like he's just gifted for it. Is and that like, kind yeah. of around the time you did that wilderness kind of video? Um, when, or when I first met Corey? Yeah. I think I said, it said in the description, like you just left high school after you'd met him and you'd kind yeah. of put the video together. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, Corey. So when we first met Corey was 16, he was a sophomore at Lake Stevens high school and I was a senior at Snohomish high school. And he got, finally got his license and started driving to Snohomish Skate Park because we had a skate park and Lake Stevens didn't. And I'd be at Snohomish Skate Park all the time, like after school and everything. And I rolled up one day and I'm just like seeing like no one skates. There's like we're we're way out in the nowhere, pretty much. It's a very small town. And like always doing like nolly heels over the pyramid, like nolly back heels. And I'm like, what? Like no one skates this good. Like, who are you? And like we became instant friends and our friendship has just grown for there. And like, yeah, you know, so we just like. And I like kind of took him out street skating for the first time. He's like, like, Hey, do you want to go skate? And like, I would kind of just got my VX 1000, my first one at the time. And he's like, yeah, let's go skate. And I took him out street skating. And like, I, I took him to like this, like 10 rail or 12 rail and he front feebles it. Like, I'm like, I've never filmed anyone this good before. And like, he's like, yeah, I've never really gone on like street missions before. And I'm like this, are you kidding me? Like you're insane. What? Like, yeah, it was, it was mind blowing. Like, wow. and I'm like still kind of learning the VX. Yeah. I grew up in a kind of a poor family. Like I didn't have like able to get like nice things that you know work and pay and like and get these things and and then kind of learn it on my own. This is before like in this day and age where you can go on YouTube and like watch your videos on like the HPX or like the videos I've made. Like kids can learn so quickly. So like back then it was like so much trial and error. But like it was a crazy time period. It was really rad. I mean I don't don't want to like complain about it, but like it was yeah it was such a dope time in life for sure uh, that talking of like because you said something that kind of hit home very much for me there which was um the first time you film with someone who's like not just good but like shockingly yeah. good that yeah. weird like holy shit because you get 
at least in those early days, at least for me, I'd be like, this is like some of the best stuff I've ever filmed. Yeah, you know yeah. I mean? And it's yeah, just it, that kind of, whoa. It, yeah, it was. It was seriously insane. And yeah, I'll, I mean, I have so much of those memories just so embedded in my mind. And like, yeah, I definitely should go through and make some like, it'd be fun to go through and make some like OG compilation, like edits and post yeah, it on YouTube yeah. with like some of the, the first stuff of Corey and all that. It was, yeah, it was yeah, it was it was mind blowing. It still is so insane. <laughs> I mean, you've got those uh, like behind the French Fred scenes. Where's the skate rats yeah. tapes? You know exactly. I know. I gotta like. I don't know. I've been trying to like, like think about how I can utilize my YouTube channel now because like I do have a bit of a good, a decent amount of subscribers on YouTube, and like all my videos, I've just never really cared about monetizing videos that much, and I've just made because I just like the freedom to be able to use whatever song I want with whatever like little YouTube edit I do. Yeah. So I don't care. I'd just rather have that creativity freedom. But now, like, seeing, like, all these YouTube bloggers, you know, like, John Hill and all these other people on YouTube that make all these videos. And, like, I know they're making, like, a decent amount of money. And, like, also being a filmer in L.A., like, like what else can I do to make money? Because I'm so broke all the time, you know, like, <laughs> just living paycheck to paycheck. So I'm, like, trying to think how I could, like, utilize my YouTube channel more and, like, make edits. Like, not go full vlog mode, but, like, with things that are still kind of, like, sick. Like, you know, like the French Fred stuff. And, like, I know Beagle's doing his tapes, like and just be able to monetize that because you're not using music and whatnot. So it'd be cool to like try to think of some stuff and get some new stuff going for sure. I mean, you've got, you filmed with some fucking incredible people in the past. You know, I'm sure you've got, you've yeah. got plenty on those tapes of, you know, yeah, put on there. Absolutely. Totally, totally, yeah. I mean, I can't remember what they said about Beagle's like collection. He must have like, was it 10 years worth of tapes or something he Dude, can put up? It's probably insane, yeah. yeah it's yeah. just that whole Baker crew and all those guys. Like, yeah, he must have so much footage. Yeah, I hope Be I hope Beagle's making some money off his YouTube channel. I hope he, yeah, he deserves it. He's been out there hustling for a minute. I should try and get Beagle on here. Holy shit. Oh my god, that'd be so sick. Dude, I have I have a Beagle story. I was on oh my um when I was working at the barracks, they sent me out on this trip with um what was like Andrew Reynolds? It was like Reynolds, Atiba, Shane, um, who does like Shane Junk. Like they had a, oh, they had the a goat. band. The go, yeah. And so they were doing a tour for the goat, and like I was gonna hop on the trip film the tour and like make like a barracks edit of the whole trip and it was out to phoenix arizona like i'm in the van i'm like 21 i'm like losing my mind this is insane like i'm from the middle of nowhere in washington and working for the barracks was nuts like i was like so nerve-wracked like what am i doing here this is insane <laughs> but like it was such a wild trip but i remember doing going we were did the tour did the like show they played their music and then we were skating street around phoenix beagle wanted to get a manual trick and like i was filming them i filmed it we watch it and he literally was like, you filmed it too good. Can you film it more sketchy? Because, you know, he has like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, and I felt bad. I'm like, oh, you got to do it again. Like he wanted more like, you know, the shake jump, like the more like epicness, like, yeah, to, like the footage. And I was like, I'll never forget that memory. I was like, OK, I'll try to film a more budget. Like, but it's so that funny. steady shot off. <laughs> yeah, literally. Yeah, exactly. Anything to give it more like. And not to like rag on Beagle, Beagle or anything. Like I love his filming. It's so him. It's so yeah. like yeah, I love that stuff when you find your own originality. So like, but yeah, it was just a funny story. <laughs> Could you film it a bit? Fuck it, that's so good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so good. Oh, yeah. Man. Um, but talking of the barracks, I have to bring yeah. it up. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. What was it like working there during its? early iteration because you were there with 09 to 2011 yeah. or so yeah somewhere around there yeah yeah i mean i was part of like the original staff like the og days like wow well back when i mean you know the barracks was epic it was so fresh it was so brand new it was, and that whole video content and the internet was a really part sparking off and like they were killing it um definitely don't regret any of it i owe steve and like cost and like so much you know they changed my life for the better and like steve had my back he let me live at his house for a year for free you know like wow yeah, it, it was, it was a, a lot of appreciation for those guys, but it was just getting too much. It was, there's a lot of stuff that went on behind the scenes. that was just like too much for me. And it was really killing my, just the vibe there. Like I was like starting to hate filming. I started to hate skating. Like it was just not what I thought it was going to be. And like, and I mean, people, there's, you go on the internet and find out like all the drama that goes on there and stuff. But like, it just came too much for me. And luckily I had an opportunity where I left and I got to leave on good terms. So like I quit the barracks and like, still super cool with everyone there but yeah i got out on good terms and everything and just started you know doing my own thing since there but yeah it was fun it was good there was one of the last like key moments for me i'm like i gotta leave was we had to like sign these new contracts and none of us read them but like the apparently the fine print was like everything i film is for the barracks and the barracks only and i ended up like skating with Corey on the weekends like my days off and like 
I filmed Corey's switch front big heel, the Santa Monica triple set, and which was going to be for pretty sweet and all that stuff. And like, and I ended up getting in trouble saying like, no, that's, that's for the barracks. And I'm like, no, that's on the weekends. That's my days off. Like I'm going to sell that to girl. Like I'm helping my best friend film one of his best video parts ever. And I was like, whoa, they're literally controlling my life. Like, wow. this is not cool. And that was like one of the key moments. I'm like, I got to get out of here. Like that did not fly with me. And so I, managed to like kind of come with a deal where like I could still freelance my skate rights edits for the barracks and like sell them to them. That way I can still go freelance work and do for other companies. So it's not like crossing agreements with whatever that paper I signed. And so that was like the kind of the deal we came to, but I just like kind of fizzled out and like never sold skate rights edits to the barracks and just kind of parted ways and just went and did my own thing after that. That's kind of intense. Yeah, it was pretty wild, but still so much appreciation for Steve and the chance he gave me and the opportunity. I mean, he literally changed my life. He gave me the best kids would kill to have that opportunity and steve hooked it up so i do have a lot of appreciation for what he did for me for sure i, I gotta ask what's it like living with barra for a year uh it was it was it was it was sick he lived in a really nice house up in silver lake and like um yeah it was it was it was interesting he um i got and his buddy mark weber who was like an actor he lived with steve as well he was like in between places and he lived there and then steve uh he got like custody of his daughter again he, he has a daughter and she started living she was living there as well um it was super mellow it was a really nice house nice neighborhood but yeah and once again i mean he had my back because i because cory was going to move down and him and i were going to get a place because he was still finishing high school because i was two years older than colby or cory and but he ended up something happened he couldn't come down so it kind of left me in this weird predicament where i didn't have a place to go so i was living in malibu with uh, Corey's older sister who was going to college down there. And I was going to move out, try to get closer to the barracks because the drive from Malibu to downtown LA is about like 50 minutes, quite the drive. And so Steve's like, no, just come live with me. I got you. Like he had, and like even Buttery Donovan who worked for the barracks, he had his video segments. Like he lived at Steve's house too. Like Steve had a lot of people's backs for sure, helping people out in that department. It's kind of like Steve was running like sk like the skate house. That's kind of crazy. Yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. I can't definitely. imagine like you, Bearer, Buttery Ass Donovan. Yeah. In the same house, maybe yeah, not at the same time, but just like. Yeah, There's yeah. a TV show there. There's no, a TV dude, show. Seriously, yeah. I, I'm surprised Bearer never tried to get something going like that, especially <laughs> with his connection with Rob Deerdick and like their boys and like. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Yeah, in the Fantasy Factory in that time, the Fantasy Factory was right next to the barracks. Like literally a block a block away yeah that's so weird like the yeah it was wild yeah and we did we did one episode on the fantasy factory is like the barracks versus the fantasy factory and like so i got to be on mtv for a couple seconds claim the fame no. was that not <laughs> weird or terrifying <laughs> uh it, it was interesting it was funny like i was just like we we faked a text yourself like so there was a planted text and a text yourself and i was going to film rob and steve do a text yourself but one of the fake texts was like you guys should battle the fantasy factory and like that's how the episode starts or whatever ah. yeah it was pretty it was pretty funny like how it all panned out but yeah it was yeah it was fun it was i mean so much epic stories i could write a book working for the barracks it was it was wild maybe that's an, maybe there's an idea there write a book yeah literally yeah yeah that, that too you could do like a prince harry you yeah. know just your face like my time at the barracks you know that <laughs> <laughs> I'll spill all the beans. <laughs> Steve Barrett doesn't drink four coffees a day. You know, that kind of thing. <laughs> yeah. All the drama. Actually, I just had a thought regarding um, the personality stuff. Personality yeah. of like films and stuff. I was just thinking that like the, the, I think the best person to like describe as like being able to interact with all types of skater. Yeah. Greg yeah. Hunt. Mm -hmm. yeah great Absolutely. Hunt. You got yeah. Jason Dill. And then yeah. Heath Kirchhoff, two very, oh, very totally, yeah. different skaters. Same yeah, video, yeah. but yeah. he, go yeah, I think he's like the perfect one for like the personality Dude, for real. And stuff. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. I should try and get Greg on here as well. If you don't oh, do that'd that. be so sick. That'd be epic. It's like, Greg, when's the Blu ray of Minefield coming out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and why is it not happening? Yeah, we need it now. I would pay out the arse to get a Blu-ray of Minefield. Oh my oh, god! Oh, that'd be that'd be so epic. Like yeah. all like the sixteen millimeter like yeah. scanned in four K. Oh my god, that'd be beautiful. Yeah, dude, it's like it kind of crazy. Like, was that like the last like videos just aren't made like that anymore? Like, yeah. I feel like there's not. I mean, like Propeller was epic too, you know. But like, it just I feel like videos are not like that anymore, and I miss that. Like, 
It's so epic. <laughs> like the days of like the big premiere and like knowing yeah. you're gonna at least sell a couple of thousand DVDs easily. Yeah, totally. Now it's just like a ten minute, fifteen minute video and that's like a full length. And I'm like, no, that's not a full length. Like no, no. but that's like kind of where the standards are now. And it's kind of sad because it kind of like contributes to like social media and how it's destroying our attention spans and we're getting shorter attention spans and like kind of becoming dumber and now like skate videos are becoming shorter and shorter and like a full part one day is going to be like a minute long like I, it's kind of sad to see where things are going in my opinion i just wish they weren't changing that way i think the day that parts get shorter than the song that they're yeah. using that's a bad that's going to be a bad day yeah 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 it's yeah i wish we can get a better grip on social media and how it's destroying attention spans and like stop like figure out how to use this technology better i mean talking of like physical media and whatnot i feel like because there's kind of a um a boost in popularity with like vinyl cassette tape and stuff like that maybe yeah, yeah. there might be a bit of a kind of a boost yeah. back into the life of like dvd sales exactly, even maybe like yeah. vhs for a bit of a gimmick you know maybe that'll yeah, come totally. back yeah that physical copy yeah fingers crossed yeah <laughs> that'd be nice yeah i mean how, like, talking of like dvd stuff like how many like copies of pump on this have you sold um, I think I just did a thousand. That's what I started with. I think Rat Poison, I did maybe like 1400 and um, DVDs and yeah, I just sold them all. But I mean, it'd be nice to have done more. But yeah, I kind of knew like to do a little more when I did pump on this because, you know, things have changed so drastically within the years. And so and trying to push those out. But um, yeah, that's probably that's pretty much like the numbers I was running. Not too big compared to other you know, brands like how much DVDs were a big part of sales for large skateboard companies. So it's kind of sad that that disappeared because that just, you know, dwindled out their revenue of the year too for like, you know, I would say like pretty sweet being like one of the last big DVDs too for like girl yeah. and chocolate and all that. And now they don't have that revenue sales anymore either, which is interesting to think about. I mean, maybe that's also a part of why like certain companies are going down because they aren't making, I mean, yeah. it's a lot of money to make a video of course, but like at least yeah, they can yeah. kind of maybe get a, tiny bit of profit back on some of yeah, those. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely a thing to think about as well, which is sad <laughs> too at this too. Yeah. I mean, I still want to see more Blu-ray releases. Yeah, yeah. Like, I mean, Pretty totally. Sweet was probably the last one. Actually, no. Yeah. Lens Freeze just come out on Blu-ray. Okay, okay. Sick, so I guess sick. that technically counts as like the last one. Yeah, yeah, for, yeah, yeah. For now. So I've noticed in your edits that you use quite a lot of like mellow music. Not like melancholic yeah. but you know just kind of calm not too bombastic and anything like that is yeah. that an aesthetic choice or is that more of a personal taste i think it's just more of a personal taste i've just probably have like gravitated towards um i mean i'm from like the pacific northwest so i love modest mouse like i know i use a lot of mouse modest mouse in my music and like bands like that built to spill the shins you know like that's just kind of what i grew up listening to so it's just more of like i guess my favorite sort of music but I definitely enjoyed editing, skating to that type of music. I guess more like indie-ish music, things like that. And I just kind of like gravitated toward like, that's just like my way of expressing myself into my videos in a way. So I think that's probably where it comes from. I'm, I'm talking of me actually mentioning the shins. Fucking love the shins. Yeah, yeah. Fucking love the shins. And Built to Spill, god damn. Yeah, I just, I just saw them live, Built to Spill. It was insane. We saw Modest Mouse is on tour. They were touring um, one of their older albums and last minute i didn't think i was going to go to the show they were in la i was like I, it's just like too much money and like my buddy sean hale he's like dude let's get tickets we're going and, I, <laughs> and they said it was sold out but it wasn't somehow and we got tickets it's the sickest show ever dude and then a week later built to spill was playing too so i literally saw modest mouse and then saw built to spill and i've only seen them like a few times live so i was like dude this is like the sickest two weeks ever like, it was so <laughs> it was so sick I, oh my god it was like the highlight of 2022 for sure did they play um what's the song from Cairo's part in the reason uh, oh yeah Kyrie. yeah uh, yeah 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 they did i'm pretty sure they did yeah 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 it was dude and he's and my my good friend travis he was uh, he went to the show to build spill and he was leaving he drove separate and doug the lead singer he was leaving with the stuff and tar was like pulling out and he rolled down the window he's like dude you guys killed it and he and like i've heard he's like the nicest dude and he's like dude thank you so much that means so much that he came out to the show like kind of chatted with, with travis for a second i was like it's just so sick when you like like love someone's music so much and they're just such a nice person as well yeah. like it's just the best thing to hear yeah I mean, doug said look seems like quite a big bear yeah you know, totally like big yeah, and cuddly. yeah 
Exactly. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if he knows he's got kind of a a bit of a following in the skate I, industry. I I think he does because uh, Scuba Steve, like one of the main Nike team managers, you know the the legend. He's like a huge Built to Spill fan and like sees all their shows. And I think he like knows Doug and like he's like, dude, I'll send you Nikes. Like I got you. Like, <laughs> so like I'm pretty sure like yeah. So like, I feel like he's got to know like there's the skateboarders. We love you, Doug. Shout out. <laughs> I'd love to see him react to like Cairo's part or like Mark's yeah. part in Modus. Dude, that'd be sick. Yeah, someone's got to do that. Like I think Jenkum have got yeah, the power to yeah, do that. Yeah, they're all about that vibe. So yeah, yeah, that'd be sick. I mean, they got what's his name. Um... <laughs> Grizzly Man. He made Grizzly Man. That was it. Werner Herzog. God damn. Okay, okay, okay. Where, okay. Where's it? Yeah, he got. They got Werner Herzog. So yeah, I'm sure they yeah, can get yeah. Doug. Yeah, yeah. That'd be that'd be a sick little video. Yeah. Talking of um, like seeing bands and stuff like that, completely off. Well, not related to like questions and stuff, but like I'm gonna go and see La Tigra. Dude. In June. Wow. That and I'm gonna so shit myself if they play Decepticon. Yeah. Oh my god, dude. Uh. Rick McCrank has been my favorite skater since the dawn of time. I've always just really enjoyed his skating. And a random fact about me, I've never drank or done drugs my whole life. Never nice. have. I've just never, I just never got into it. Like my folks didn't raise me and my brothers religious at all. Like they never pushed anything on us. I just never thought, I just never thought it was for me. And I did see some like negative things growing up that kind of helped me like, eh, I don't need that stuff. But I remember like growing up skating, like fan of Rick McCrank and then finding out he like doesn't really do drugs either, like kind of straight edge or whatever. And I was like, oh, there's another one out there. Like, I could, so I could kind of relate myself to him. And, like, yeah. And then, of course, like, every party skates to, he always has such a good song with his parts. And, yeah, like, yeah, the T-Gro is just, like, dude, just so iconic, like, insane. I mean, those, like, his Menic Matty part, yeah, right. To come out yeah. within, like, the three years, like, goddamn. Yeah, yeah. The yeah. golden era of skateboarding dude, right it, there. Oh, my God. Just so, yeah, so epic. Yeah. He did the bam, do, 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 do. I can't <laughs> so wait. Good. I might, I might get a Rick McCrank shirt or something. Yeah, something. Just yeah, some, yeah. I gotta wear it. I gotta. Yeah. Oh, God damn, it's gonna be so good. <laughs> That's sick. So I want to know. Yeah. Tell me about your best day filming and your worst day filming. Now this can be, like, I'm like tons of clips or like one amazing one or just like yeah. nothing got done, camera got robbed, got a ticket, whatever it might be. Maybe one of the. Maybe somewhat recent, like I feel like it kind of the best day and like just an epic one was uh Siba Walker's Ender in Pump on This. He nolly flipped manual down the uh LA convention hubber, the one in downtown LA. And like that was so insane. That was one of the few times filming when like I'm filming someone doing something so gnarly. Like when they're going, I'm like, <gasps> like I'm so scared for them. Like, cause it was so gnarly. And like we knew that was gonna be his ender for his part. And then literally the security guards are coming up the one he landed there's four security guards or three and they're kicking us out and he landed that one but like wow. that day was so insane and just like so nerve-wracking i've never really think about all the tricks i filmed like that one was like actually terrifying like so worried for SIBO because that thing is so big it was insane and then i would say one of the worst days filming um it wasn't really on my i didn't really have to worry about it financially but i was filming um oh my god what is his name he's from spain he writes for nike kind of an older head now oh my god we were filming to text yourself at the barracks and someone was like do a front heel down the five stair and i look i think i was filming with one of our dvx's because the vx's were in the shop yeah getting fixed and he goes to front heel it and i'm just filming him and like he just doesn't realize how close he's riding to me like i just no perception or whatever and just front heels right into the the DVX and like just kicks it out of my hand and just goes flying out of the air and just watching it slow boat and just splats and shatters. Like I was like, Steve's going to kill me. Bear is going to kill me. Like, but it was just so insane. I don't know what he was thinking. Like he literally just like skated into me. It was the craziest thing ever. I might and, have like, to pull that, that up. Yeah, I, dude, that was wild. Like I, yeah, that was probably like a definitely worst day ever. Just like having the camera just <laughs> leaving your hands. You're like, no. Like, was this, did you save the footage? Was it like um, salvageable? I, I don't recall. It that was quite many years ago now. But yeah, I wonder if it. Oh yeah, I wonder if that is on the barracks still. I I might not be because I know they've had to like take videos down for their server and like consuming space. But like, yeah, I because I've. I wonder if any of my OG skate ride edits are still in the barracks too. I've never, I haven't looked in many years, but maybe there's a few. But I mean, I went yeah. stalking on um, your website 
not a, like a day or two ago, and I went yeah. kind of quite far down. I'm talking like 2011, 2012. Yeah, ago. six, six, six. Some of them, I think, are still on there. I'm yeah, not sure maybe about a few. all of them. Yeah. Though. Also, I just got to ask, what did you think of the DVX? Um, it was. I mean, for what it was, it was pretty epic. You know, like being able to do 24 frames, like. It was definitely a sick camera when it came out. My buddy, Brandon Jensen, who made Beware Sasquatch that Corey has like a really epic part in. Uh, Brandon filmed a lot with the DVX as well. He definitely ran that camera for a while for his videos. Um, yeah, it was cool. It was, I mean, Panasonic audio is just nothing compared to, you know, the VX1 audio. So it's just a bummer that Panasonic can never really dial in like nice crisp audio. But yeah. it was cool for what it was, you know, it, it was fun. I, yeah. I just, I don't know. I mean, I'm, I'm going to be incredibly biased. It was like one of the first proper cameras that I had, like the DVX. Yeah, So it's, totally, it's totally. got a soft spot for me in the heart. Yeah, and no like, doubt, no doubt. I, I think it's kind of underrated, you know? I yeah, mean, totally, I feel yeah. Like more people use GL2s than DVXs. Yeah, right? And that was just the worst camera ever, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever used one? Yeah, Corey actually had one. Yeah, he had a GL2. Um, we never really used it, but I remember he did have one. But that was like the only time I've probably really have ever held one realistically or like played around with it. But yeah, but we just everything we did on my VX one. Keep it real. Yeah. A bit of a techie question now. I was like, I this is just going off a photo that I saw. It's like, are you a Mac like an aged Mac Pro user? Um, yeah, I've uh I've always used Mac. Um growing up in our family we had like a Dell PC, you know, but then went to mac to use final cut you know back in like 2007 2006 or something like that and just been on mac since then um so just been running it still i mean i I just have like a 2015 macbook pro like nothing crazy just trying to i think did they bring the ports back i know 2015 was like the last year where they had the hdmi like the for the memory card slot and everything before they went all USB C. Yeah. so definitely just been trying to hold on to this macbook as long as i can um but yeah still running mac um i don't i haven't really dove in back into the pc world or like how good they've become or if they are pretty epic but you tell me your opinions like what what have you been running with you think that's pretty much the same now or what do you think um well for personal stuff i was running a windows laptop for about yeah two years maybe three, actually no three years and i've always had windows um but when i got my job where i'm at now yeah we uh predominantly iMacs Okay, so I had yeah. to learn how to use it. And over time, I was like, you can't buy a second-hand Windows computer that isn't terrible, at least from yeah. my knowledge. It's always going to be too slow yep. or it's just out of date. And yeah, so yeah. I, I had to make the switch eventually. Eventually, And so I bought a Mac Pro for yeah. 40 quid, uh -huh. like the full-on like cheese grater, which I think you have. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, um, yeah and that's what I'm, I'm using right now. And it, you can't tell... It's from 2012. No, totally. Yeah, it, it's crazy how Macs do hold up over time. Like, yeah, they they last, which is nice. Yeah, it's, so it's worth it. I, I don't want to play favorites, but it's like, I haven't wanted to pull my hair out so far. So yeah, know, yeah. touch wood. So far, it's doing yeah, pretty yeah, good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, totally. And, and I don't think you'd find a, a Windows computer for £40. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> for, no, or, yeah. In your country, 40 fucking schmackaroons or whatever. Yeah, you know, yeah, 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 that yeah, would yeah. Edit deep, like HVX footage as smoothly yeah. as this can. And it, it definitely, and it like, kind of, I think about it too, you know, like, I just have my VX 1000s and like my HPX, you know, and like, so I don't really have a 4K camera. Like, you know, if I ever like need to do other work or like, I feel like it kind of shoots myself in the foot for future jobs because, you know, 4K and all that stuff will eventually be the future. And, like, I've seen memes, like, a 720, even HD, like, stuff like that, you know? And, like, so it's, like, interesting, too, because if I do somehow make the purchase, like, in, you know, like, this 2015 MacBook Pro doesn't really, it doesn't work for 4K footage. And, like, I'm going to have to buy a newer MacBook that can handle the 4K stuff or, like, you know, it's, like, it's just, which sucks that it all comes back to money. But, yeah, it's just interesting, like, how... I need to like kind of refigure things out as time goes on, like mm. to shape, shape up the times. But at the same time, skateboarding world is so funny because we use such old technology. So it kind of managed to make ends meet with what I got. Yeah. I mean, unless they immediately start requiring everyone to own red cameras, I think you'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could always make proxies as well. Yeah. 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 Make it work. Yeah. Not, I don't think it'd be too bad. Yeah. You credit the artist. Now that sounds like such like a minimal thing, 
But for uh, me, yeah, I think yeah. that's very important. Like the musician that you know makes the song. Totally. And like I was watching um, Sebo's like little kind of weekend Sebo thing that he did a uh, while back. Yeah, yeah. And you credit the musician at the end, and I'm like, okay, Frash should do it. You do it. I'm not entirely sure like how common it is. I think Jacob Harris does it. I mean, like how important is it to you to credit the musician? Definitely. As time goes on, like I like my older skate right edits, I never really thought of it. I just like made edits, and it wasn't crediting artists. Um, but it, it was kind of like, but now as time goes on and you really realize like how important a skate song is to a part, like you could have like the best skater, good filming and just the worst song and it ruins the part. Like you're not going to be hyped on it. Like music is like so important for a video part. So definitely like, yeah, really try to shout out the, the music because I mean, music plays everything. Like, like our genres of music that us skateboarders listen to all literally come from skateboard videos. Like that's how we find our music and what we're into. So yeah, definitely try to always shout out the musicians and give them the respect because I mean they gotta get paid too. But I definitely I regret myself not doing it as much as I should have been back in the day as well too. Like I definitely would wish I could have thought about that as a bigger picture for sure. But yeah, super important. With especially with how the music industry is at the moment, for like small artists, it's filming, skateboarding, and kind of the music industry in a way is kind of similar. You know, there's yeah, not much yeah. money. You know, it's really about the independent artists making like the good stuff. Okay, maybe not relating to filming and stuff, but like, yeah, you know, there's, there's so many kind of bits that intertwine with the music industry and how it is at yeah. the moment with like just no totally, money yeah. and the streaming and all this other stuff. It's like you gotta work together with that kind of that kind of yeah, thing. yeah, yeah, totally, yeah, super important. So get on Bandcamp. You know, there's good music out there. You know, don't yeah. put a fucking I don't, I don't know, no yeah and i mean a lot of the skate a lot of the skate homies like to make music too like really people people are really into it and like yeah and like even uh like aaron gore from uh welcome skateboards like aaron's a really rad dude and he makes pretty cool music so i definitely want to try like dabble and like you know use some of his stuff and support him as well if i can yeah man and especially with like some of the smaller artists some of them anyway turn out to be skaters so they're more than hyped yeah exactly yeah yeah, like my friend Travis Harrison, we just did a new Skate Rats part, and hopefully that will go up on Thrasher soon. But um, his roommate Hunter uh, gave us this band, like a super low-key local band in L.A., and Star was like, yeah, I want to use one of their songs. And like it worked perfect for his part. It was really sick. We actually just saw them live the other night, just a small little venue. But yeah, just a small band in L.A., and they're so down for it. It's like they, we got to hang out with them afterwards. Like, dude, use any of our music. Like we own all the rights to it. So just use whatever you want. So it's cool to work with smaller bands and just try to help them out as well because they're helping us out too. And I think with like it even comes down to like the monetization side of it. You know, if it's yeah. important for you to get advertising or just even just any kind of money from uh, an edit you put out or even getting a DVD yeah. printed. I don't know how it works with like copyrighted music versus independent music. Like, did they throw totally? Yeah a bit of like, oh, you can't, we, we won't print that because it's got like Madonna or something on it, you know? Yeah, 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 totally, yeah. It's definitely, yeah, less stressful when you know you got the rights to the music or whatever. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. You seem to be one of the last filmers to have like a legit website blog kind of thing. Yeah, you still know? trying to keep skaterats.com going. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've been subscribed to your like email notifications for about five uh, years now, honestly. Sick, thank you, yeah, yeah. No, I just, I, I don't know, it's like kind of, it's kind of, in a way, kind of like the VX, you know, it's kind of like the old kind of way of doing it, you know, yeah, it, what it's keeps kinda, you to it. It's, it's kind of, yeah, it's like a weird, to compare, it's like almost like having a DVD, like you're holding it, but yet like you have a website, like, you know, but it's virtual or whatever in the Matrix or whatever, but like, it's kind of like that originality or like, I think it's, yeah, it's nice. I'd, I mean, I'll, I'll keep it as long as I can, but I should be updating it more often, but I'm also like always working like trying to pay bills so working as a working as a handyman breaking my back doing that and then breaking my back filming but yeah trying to like keep that going but yeah i think it's sick gotta gotta have one i like it maybe i'm just nostalgic but yeah i think there's a bit more personality that comes with it than just like instagram page logo you know yeah yeah and uh you just keep swiping through it and like it doesn't even stay in your brain it's just in ear one out the, out the other like with social media yeah the attention spans and stuff yeah and especially, how, I mean, it seems like such a small thing, but just actually having like a post with like a headline that you can yeah. like remember to go back to, like, oh, there's this thing, instead of just like thumbnail, yeah. thumbnail, thumbnail. It's like, it just exactly, blows into yeah. one. It does, uh, totally, totally. It really does. So true. Ever thought about doing like a zine or something? Uh, it, that'd be sick too. I mean, I do have some photos. My my roommate um, that lives with me right now, Corey Greengage, he's a photographer from Seattle. He moved down 
um he actually put out a sick little photo zine that's pretty rad that's like it's like kind of showcasing all the seattle skate scene skaters and stuff he killed it. it was really sick but yeah it'd be fun to like make a little something one day i mean i've definitely shoot a lot of film photos and stuff it'd be cool to put a little something together that'd be rad i think it'd be kind of cool yeah a lot and of stories to be told five dollars on your website yeah a little something yeah yeah there you go ever thought about shooting like 16 millimeter film yeah i've, I've re- recently in the last couple of years my uh, buddy chris sabota he's we grew up in the same town he lives down here in la he does like video work as well really one of the nicest people i've ever met and he let me borrow a 16 so i've just been shooting with that recently and having fun with it and trying to learn it a little more before that i was just shooting super eight but yeah chris let me borrow his 16 so trying to figure that out it's fun expensive but it's fun is it like a bow lag so yeah 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 yep yep god damn that's a beautiful camera yeah definitely yeah it there it's it's just that sound just like pulling the trigger and it's just like this this is gonna be sick <laughs> <laughs> it's its own it's its own medium you know it's just it's so rad film is so cool i i it a colleague of mine um got a Krasnogorsk kind of Russian 16 uh-huh. millimeter camera and they wind it up and all this stuff. Yeah. And I'm Sick. like, I hear it going through and I'm like, man, that's like one pound, two pound, like just the feet of film oh my going God. through. A, like, yeah. Oh my God, it's a hundred pound of film yeah. and it's like two minutes and it's gone. <laughs> exactly. Like whatever we're shooting, if you're going to try the trick, just land it or like just shoot some <laughs> B-roll. Like I can't afford this. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I can't imagine what it must have been like in like the late nineties, early t- like Ty Evans, like all the yeah. film in the transworld videos yeah right like yeah i wonder like it'd be interesting to somehow find that data like how much it was what the pricing was and what the comparison to like our like how it values in the dollar like that'd be interesting to find out one day like if it was actually affordable like maybe it wasn't hurting the bank account that much i mean or or, 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 or if it was yeah true yeah 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 that'd be interesting to find that out one day that just reminds me, actually, I have possibly the answer right here. This is my DV Cam book. <laughs> oh, sick. sick. From 2001. So it's a little bit later. Uh huh. But it might give an idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of uh, the cost. I know it might, I think it talks about 35. Okay. So, six. Okay, so this would be for. Okay, so 16 millimeter film, processing, work, and a work print. Thirty-five dollars a minute. So for ninety four hundred foot rolls, which for like a transworld video, I could believe. You yeah, know, yeah. Skating, thirty-one thousand yeah. five hundred dollars. Crazy, interesting. Okay. And that's uh, that's that's so that's nine hundred. Um, yeah, that's like fuck. That's a lot of money. Yeah. <laughs> God <laughs> damn. So, what were some of your inspirations that got you into filming skating? I. Th- I think it was just like, um, I've always been attracted to like movies and like video and, and then skating came about, like got into skating and then like, you know, want to film ourselves skating. Cause then you find skate videos you're like, Oh, I want to film, document my skating as well. And just all kept like going on from there. Just like the finding the love for video stuff. And then also years back, a few years back, I've never realized it until now was watching some show on Netflix and they said it, but like they said, one of the characters is dyslexic and like, I've always struggled with reading and writing and I've never known about that word and I've never known about it. And I realized like, is that what I am? Am I actually kind of dyslexic? And cause I remember growing up as a kid in elementary school, I had to take really these special reading classes. And then I had like a reading tutor that would come over to my our house and like, help me read like Dr. Seuss books. And I knew I was reading like really grades below me and like, feel like an idiot like this isn't like this is so easy to read like why am I struggling and I didn't realize all my adulthood until recently like that I kind of struggled with that and I never knew a word associated with that but I, but then I also look back and I'm like that's probably why I've been attracted to like video stuff as well because it's just easier to learn from videos and like maybe my eyes instead of like reading books and like so I feel like that played a part as well what kind of got me into videography to an extent in photography or whatever like that was probably a part of it but yeah to sum it up that was probably a big part for sure though actually if i really think about it it's quite interesting actually like the um the dyslexia kind of part of it because i feel like yeah. i'm quite a um visual learner like yeah, when yeah. i was in school i always hated like the theory side of it like i always wanted to do the practical because I, yeah, I, yeah. I would struggle like actually sitting there like because i know i'm going to struggle to type out what i need yeah. to and like i'm not confident is it the 
is it spelt right? And I mean, yeah, I, yeah, it's totally, spell yeah. check, but there's still, you know, yeah, it's in the way. And, it, and in high school, like I would talk with the teachers, like, hey, can I not do the presentation? Like, could I do a video for my presentation? Like, because I just, I was going to struggle with it. I was going to be embarrassed, like, I'm trying to read out loud in front of the class. Like, high school is a nightmare for me because I was just yeah. like, just like going through puberty, like, like having a crush on a girl and then like just trying to presentate, <laughs> like butchering the reading the words, like I'm such an idiot. Like I just feel so <laughs> stupid. Like, and so I like, luckily my teachers were cool and like, they allowed me to do like a video presentation for the project and like they would accept that. So like I would definitely try to work in the ways to make it doable throughout high school and survive in high school. <laughs> yeah, it was wild. <laughs> what were some of the video presentations you had to do? Uh, I had to do one on, uh, it was like a health class. And we were learning about drugs and like how bad certain drugs were. And we got associated with like huffing, like doing drugs by huffing and inhaling. Yeah. And so I did a whole video presentation on like huffing and like how gnarly it is and the bad things. I remember doing that video presentation. Another like history class, I think I had to do a presentation on like Tasmania. We had to pick a country or something. I think I got Tasmania. And and then I took this really sick sci-fi class. It was for English credit. We like read uh, like sci-fi books or whatever. And I was like the youngest kid in the class. I think it was like a sophomore and all the kids were seniors. And the end of the year project was like, you had to do some sort of like presentation of like, a, like a imaginary theory of like an a pop, like the world's ending. Like, what would your bug out kit be? And like, and we what? made up a bit. It was so fun. It was the sickest class ever. The teacher was so cool. And like, I came up with the idea. I'm like, what, like, we should like get a Bigfoot suit. And like, what would you do if Bigfoot <laughs> attacked? And like, and this one dude, he was like, the best like i think he ended up being an nba like he was this really good basketball player at high school and so we got hit he was in our group and like we put him in the bigfoot suit he was like just a giant and like cool. it was and so like i was like filming and i edited the whole video like it was so funny dude i should find that and upload that to my youtube channel it was so funny and like i was so just thinking budget. that yeah it was hilarious but Question that was is, a really was it on the vx because if no, it, wasn't... it was it was before the vx it was on like a small little mini DV camera that I had before I got the VX that we had like a clip on fisheye for it. Like <laughs> and we made like a metal handle rig that screwed in, you know, to the tripod. Like, Oh, that's dude, amazing. Those were the days, man. Take me back. Like those, uh, it was so fun. Just like, just, you know, just having fun, like legit fun. Like, yeah, those will always be the days. Yeah. God damn those clip on fish eyes. I, I yeah. know exactly the one you're talking about. Yeah. And they say they're like 0. 0.3, like they're like, it's a fish eye, <laughs> like point, it's on the lens, you know? I'm like, yeah, for sure, this is 0. 0.3. <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. Those are sick. Yeah. I could see you doing like a little edit on one of those yeah. like old, like just dad cam, like totally. yeah, DV yeah. things, like a tiny little fish eye. Yeah, I, I mean, I still have a few of them. Like, legit, I have a few of the ones I had back in that time frame. Like, yeah, yeah, I've used them as cab cams, but yeah, yeah, those those are sick. <laughs> like a Sebo part on like the dad cam. Exactly. Yeah, that'd be fun. That'd be sick. That'd be sick. Part coming soon. <laughs> Holy shit! Um... Film in a week. <laughs> <laughs> if the camera lasts that long, though. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Dang! No, attach the digital recorder to it too, to the firewire. <laughs> That way the tape doesn't glitch. <laughs> it's like that thing's probably bigger than the camera. Velcro oh, to the side. Probably worth more as well. Oh my yeah, God. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just like out of the side. Oh, what's up, Shane? What you feel? Oh, what the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Just a full Frankenstein camera setup. <laughs> like JVC dad cam one CCD yeah. Mark one or the extreme. Yeah. If you want to go really, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Then. please now do it shane yeah. we'll get please. we'll get the youtube views yeah it'll go viral <laughs> we'll monetize it <laughs> the homie charlie put an extreme on the vx once thanks sick. and like <laughs> filmed like just a clip of it and like the photo of it is the it's on i used yeah. to run a, uh, a meme page on facebook that's how old i am uh, sick yeah. um called <laughs> film respect, memes respect yeah um and he posted a photo of him with the vx and the extreme and it's like yes. that thing is like it gets reposted every now and again like oh my yeah. god that <laughs> god damn dude it's so good every filmer's gotta every filmer's gotta have a meme account i have a uh, pumper memes where i do all my my memes it's like it's more of like shouting out to the homies like pay me gas money or like just like low-key trying to subliminal message like yeah ah, <laughs> just I like the struggles it. that filmers go through <laughs> like, little psychology kind of yeah no, it really is yeah and there's like one video that i posted like this little kid starts to cry and it's like 
try to film professionally and make money and like the lady's like how's your day going and he just starts crying like just like the dumbest memes like it's so fun though i love it <laughs> oh man yeah I if mean, anyone out there it's called pumper memes on instagram you'll you'll have a laugh for sure go, go follow it and then give the homie yeah. some money yeah yeah pay your filmer some gas money <laughs> Dude, I can't even imagine what gas prices are in the UK. Like, it's probably, I know it's like, and even like, I think like, I mean, this is just me being a dumb American. Like, I know like, it's like way more tax money to like even own a car or things like that. Or like, it's crazy, right? Or it's pretty more epic. Like we have, I'm sure we have way more mellow, but yeah. I mean, I don't drive, but I know plenty of people do. So it's like, you've yeah. got pay for the car. So that's a bunch yeah. of money. You got yeah. road tax, you got yeah. uh, insurance, and then you've yep. got the petrol as well. And then you uh -huh. got to do MOTs every year, I believe it is. Okay. Uh -huh. So yeah, it does add up. I mean, that's why I don't drive. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's crazy to think about other countries. But also the US is such a big country and we're so spread out. But I know like smaller countries like Norway or the UK, you know, you are pretty compact and probably have way better tr public transportation than we do. Our stuff sucks over here. I wouldn't so, say Britain does. I know like every European country has. Okay, yeah. But yeah, like, yeah. at the moment, the trains are on strike. Okay. Uh, some of the buses, are, uh, bus companies are on, uh, some of the bus drivers are on strike. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's not great. Dude, that's crazy. That's crazy. Everyone's on strike, and it's crazy that skateboard filmers are going on strike too now. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get to that. Get, we'll get to that, that juicy stuff. Yeah. Because I know that's going to be the longest part. <laughs> but but that is that's crazy. I didn't know about yeah, like a lot of those unions or whatever are on strike in the UK and Britain and stuff like that. I mean, much respect. Yeah, it's. I'm sure there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes. There's a there's a guy called Mick Lynch who's kind of become the face of like British striking in the last okay, year, okay. Uh -huh. and um, he's like he's kind of like the messiah because he goes yeah. on television and he actually just says it as it is is like the yeah. country's fucked we haven't got uh -huh. enough money and the politicians keep taking it and you know and all this other stuff yeah, and it's yeah. like we want him as prime minister and all this stuff yeah it's like, yeah. That's what filming needs. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Guys, just say it straight. Like, just be straight up with it. Yeah, be honest. And exactly. Yeah. And, and like, you know, the politicians will come on and like, like oh, oh, well, they're, they're ruining the uh, British economy and all this stuff. It's like, no, we're not. Like, we're just trying to get equal pay that yeah. you seem to, like the politicians seem to get for us. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, yeah. Doctors are on strike now. Yeah. That's like unheard of in this country. Yeah. And that's scary too, because it's like. Uh, what you never know when an injury might happen and if the doctor's on strike then it's like oh you might just die like that's a scary profession to go on strike because like they are saving lives like at the end of the day so yeah that's a, that's a wild one I mean the joke in my com at the company I work for is like just don't get ill on these days <laughs> yeah 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 totally yeah um, I wanted to ask like when did you get your first VX I got my first VX from my buddy Matt Norman who's from the same town I'm from he sold me his he wasn't really using it and so I was around 17 or 18. I think I was a senior in high school. Yeah, that's when I first got my first VX. And he sold me his Mark I with it as well. So I got lucky there as well. And I think I bought it for maybe a thousand bucks or was it 15 or a thousand with the lens? You know, this is like 2006 or 2007. Wow. And I remember going over to my girlfriend's house at the time and like, look at this like showing it to her i'm sure she's like cool it's a camera like i was just remember like i can't believe i have one this is so crazy and like, i don't even know how to use it you know like still learning like no idea there's no like youtube tutorials like youtube wasn't even around then or like i think youtube came about in like 2006 or something but like but yeah it was that was an epic time of my life like actually holding it i'm like i have one I still have it, but it's like it's torn down into parts, like using the parts for extra parts for the other VXs. Oh, that's kind of so cool, technically, But technically, I still have that one, though. That's <laughs> Just, cool, though, because it's, yeah. it's like like reborn in another VX. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I have like maybe five VXs right now or four VXs and maybe like two or three are like working. And then... um Oh, and then randomly the other day, uh, this like other filmer, I think he's like a skate rights fan. He hit me up. He's moving to Austin. Uh, shout out to Adam. But yeah, he just he says like, dude, do you want my twenty one hundred? Like you can have Whoa. it. And he hooked it up. So I've never owned a twenty one hundred actually. So now yeah, I got that as well. Yeah. So that was really rad of him. I've always wondered about the twenty one hundred. I mean, it looks pretty cool. Yeah, it's sick. Definitely. I mean, it's definitely a newer camera than the one thousand, but the the audio it's just not the same it's crazy how different the audio is versus the 1000 like it's just not as good 
which is so funny being a newer camera you think the technology would have been updated and better but still yeah that 1000 audio man it's the best thing ever <laughs> i mean i'm quite late to like owning the vx and stuff like because i yeah, went yeah. through like so many i you know, i got i got the dvx and then i went hd and yeah, i was yeah. like i got a university grant uh-huh and then covid hit so i was like well <laughs> uni's not going so i'm yeah, like yeah. okay get in the vx yeah 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 and yeah sick, just, sick used it for a bit didn't touch it for like over a year or two and then i pulled it out recently and i watched a clip that i filmed um yeah uh, of the homie joe fucking not even like the most like I mean, he does like a, i don't want to ruin it because the fuck we're still working on it but he does yeah, a trip yeah. down a stair set and i was watching it back on the computer and i was like holy shit this is why people love it yeah yeah just yeah. the sound man oh my god it's crazy yeah it's it's insane how iconic that sound is for skate audio you know it's just like it's crazy. It's just wild how important sound is. Like you never really think about it, but you know, same with the music, just the audio, like the the quality of the camera mic, like especially for avid skaters who, you know, have been skating all our lives and like we love this thing so much, it comes into play so much for us, which some random person might not even care, but it's it's funny how we care so much about it. I loved when um wooden camera came out with the VX mic. Yeah. And yeah. seeing like the reviews like non skaters would do yeah. with it. And like, I don't understand why this thing even needs to exist. It doesn't even sound that good. It's like, yeah, you don't yeah, get yeah. it. It's not It's not for your YouTube vlogs, mate. It's for yeah, skate yeah. videos. You know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's its own thing. Yeah, exactly. I, yeah. Get, I want to get one of those wooden camera ones, but like $300 or something? Like, yeah, it, dude, it's interesting because I did... Um, uh, have you seen that one Instagram account, VX Fisheye Sales? They sell... I know they, it well. I know it yeah, well. Yeah, they... Um, the O'Shea's they made the uh the they he's got a buddy who's like kind of a tech wizard and he made that VX mic they took apart actual VX 1000 mics and they rewired it so it could plug into the aux and I did a review on it I got one from them and it sounds I, I in my opinion it sounds better than the wooden VX ones because it's an actual VX mic yeah but it did have like the downsize of it or the down part about it um it really picked up the wind really like filming fisheye the wind yeah. So you definitely have to get like a little windscreen for it, but the, and I compared it to the VX and that one, and it does sound good. It does work. Like if you really want like that VX audio on like an HD camera or something, but it was, it was tricky to figure out to use it for the HPX because you had to get the XLR adapter to the aux cable plugged into that. And then the XLR to into the HPX. And I realized you have to buy a certain type of XLR one. If people want to watch, I do have a YouTube video about it that I did the whole breakdown. But it was interesting kind of figuring that thing out and just trying to get the, like the H or VX audio on the HPX. But it was fun. It was an interesting like test. I I talked to um one of the homies Pedro about like trying uh-huh. to figure we, 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 like send voice notes to each other like every day trying to like figure yeah. out how the VX audio is like as good as it is. And yeah, I think right? not yeah. only is it just because of the microphone itself, but I think it's how the camera treats the sound because it's not yeah. like dv audio gonna get like uh-huh. really fucking technical dv audio yeah. is like 48 kilohertz 16 bit but uh-huh. the vx i believe i can't remember i read on some forum somewhere back in yeah. it was like a 90s forum so it's like vintage um uh-huh. and the guy was saying like the vx was made because the vx actually does 32 kilohertz 12 bit audio Okay, interesting. Because this was when they were developing the DV standard. So they didn't know yeah. if they were going to go with four channels, 12-bit, 32 kilohertz, or two uh-huh. channels, 16-bit, 48. And yeah, so yeah. they'd started making it before the um, they'd finalized like, the um, specifications for it. And then once the specs came in, it was like, oh, fuck, it, it, it doesn't match the DV standard. Um, they had to like basically up-convert the audio in the camera yeah to the dv standard so i don't i think part of it is of course the microphone but i also yeah. think some of it is the is the up conversion yeah. to the dv standard and i've noticed when i capture vx footage from my dv deck yeah it yeah. does come up as like 32 kilohertz like fucking hell so it's still Crazy, it knows yeah. it's there that's super interesting yeah yeah that's right yeah so i just wonder just like because for like the hpx like maybe mm-hmm. it's worth like lowering the quality of the audio a bit yeah, and maybe yeah. that can kind of mimic it a bit. I don't know. I haven't tested yeah. it myself personally, but it might yeah, be. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be interesting, yeah. I know, um, I saw Matt Bublitz post on his Instagram. He's using that Panasonic, uh, the HCX2 or that 4K Panasonic Oh, camera. I know the one, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he put, his, he put his extreme on it. He just posted on a story. I don't think he did a hard post, but I was like, whoa, sick, that's interesting. Like, 
you know, to be able to have a camera with a rocker zoom, you know, and like for skating and stuff. And then my good friend, Jake, uh, he's from Washington. He just moved to LA, but he just bought one the other day. So I got to like, play with Jake's a little bit. And I'm curious, like how the audio is on that Panasonic camera. So I know J Jake's a filmer as well. He's going to test it out, but it'd be cool to get the feedback and kind of compare the audio of that versus like the audio on the HPX and everything. Cause like that camera would be like, if I bought another HD camera, I'd probably think about buying that because I think it's like three grand or something. But like just to get that 4K, 4K quality and just be able to you know, have that rocker zoom and stuff for skate filming in general, but also have like a 4K camera. But yeah, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, I I really hope Matt puts out some like test footage with the extreme on it and like how it looks and stuff. That'd be cool to check it out and nerd out on that stuff. Not for sure. I mean, like, yeah, I think skateboarding needs a new HD camera. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, like that HPX stuff has got a. It's probably well, yeah. not gonna. It's uh, okay. Maybe it will die off in the next. Couple yeah, of yeah, years. yeah, yeah. I mean, see what the future brings. I think when Strobeck makes the move, I think that's when you'll see it. Yeah, that's the trend way. will start happening there. Yeah, the trendsetter Strobeck. <laughs> <laughs> Another one I want on the podcast. If you'll let yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be awesome. Like I want to get Ty on, but I think he blocked me on Instagram, so I don't know if he would. What's the heck? Come on, Ty. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think the problem was I was kind of like dissing him for like the cabra crane stuff. Okay. Uh -huh. Not like you're a fucking idiot. Not not stuff like that. Just like oh, it's funny. Yeah, people get a little too sensitive. It's like, come on, there's criticism everywhere. Like, just accept it. Like. It doesn't, yeah, I don't know. It's funny, especially when they go to the full part of like, I'm going to block this person. It's like, dude, just, just chill. It's just the internet, man. Whatever. It's like, you're a 40 year old, you're a 40 year old ish man. I'm, yeah, yeah. At the time, like 20. <laughs> you know? Yeah, 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 like, yeah. Just ignore me. It's fine. Yeah. I understand. I still love you, Ty. God damn. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so back to the questions. I, um, this is kind of an odd one, but like, my first, like, the first time I found out about you and like what you did. Uh -huh. was a re-edit contest that you did in 2012 yeah. for Mickey Burton. Yeah, yeah, Mikey Burton, yeah. Mikey Burton, sorry. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. And um, I just wondered, do you have any plans for, like, another kind of edit contest in the future? Dude, I, those were, kids really loved it. Like, it was super fun. It was, I should do another one, especially with, like, just all the new footage and new parts we put out over the years and stuff like that. I do want to do another one. I just have to, um, I guess, kind of find the time to organize it into it and then um maybe get some more skate rats gear made because we're kind of low on gear i don't have too much stuff right now and then also whichever skater it is get some of their sponsors product so i can make the little you know prize boxes for all the homies that you know do place and win but i should bring those back those were really fun i did notice like i think a few other skate companies got on board with it and they were doing the re-edit contest as well i think crail tap did it too yeah they yeah, did like those, those were fun yeah those I th yeah i thought those were really sick and seemed really fun just to go through all the edits too and see what song choices kids would use and whatnot yeah it was rad i thought that was sick yeah i mean it's i think it's also great really great experience for a lot of, like especially yeah. for me because like back then i didn't have anyone to fucking film with you know i was just like yeah i was yeah. so into it but no one skated in my area so it was like yeah the totally, only yeah the only footage i could actually edit was yeah. other people's stuff so it was like when edit contests would come about it's like fuck that's great like no not just yeah. youtube parts and just you know it's like actual totally, raw yeah. footage yeah and that was actually one of the i think one of the first edits i ever made was an edit contest it was like 2004 um uh pj lad's part with uh in the in this whichever oh my god i'm really sorry fried. yeah with no, no no music where silence is golden and then s collaborated with them and did a re-edit contest of pj's footage and that was my first editing thing I ever did and i made an edit and sent it in i didn't place but i got like I still like won some like choice pick award thing and they gave me an autographed copy of PJ Lad, and I was so blown away. It was insane. I was like this. I still have it it's somewhere right now, but like it was the coolest thing ever. But that was like kind of my first time ever editing and it was like a re-edit contest. So it's kind of funny, a full circle, like I started doing them for skate rides, but originally that's kind of where I started to an extent. Is that up and uh, is that up on YouTube? The PJ Lad one that I did? Yeah. No, I dude, I I don't know where that thing's at. That's in the depths of some PC computer from 2003. Like, oh, God it'd damn. be so cool to track that down and actually find it. I'm sure it's horrible. It's like, the, like not even just like cutting the clips and putting them where I wanted. But like, it'd be so cool to find that though. Like, 
dang, that would be fun. Go down like some Indiana Jones treasure hunt trying to find that edit. <laughs> some like recycle yard somewhere and it's like, oh my god, there's the computer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's get the hard drive. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Literally. God, damn. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I, oh, I want to see some more edit contests in the future. I think the last one yeah. I can think of was like Josh Stewart, I think. Maybe there was yeah, another one. Some... Yeah, like uh-huh. a static or something. Yeah, that's sick. Right, we should probably talk about Filmer's Right then, shouldn't we? Oh, yeah, should we Yeah, get, get the real spicy stuff let's going? Let's delve into that fucking topic. <laughs> <laughs> so, you've already kind of talked about this on um, the, yeah, mostly the Mostly Skateboarding, skateboarding yeah. podcast, so shout out to them, go check that fucking episode yeah. out, great stuff. Um, my The way I want to kind of kick this off is like, when you sell a clip, you personally, or yeah. if you know for other people as well, when you sell a clip, are you selling the rights to use the clip or are you selling the ownership of the clip? I guess it I guess it'd be the rights to the clip because like if you film the clip, sell it to the company, it's theirs. They can use it for their video part if they want to chop it up for Instagram, like it's theirs now. Like that's kind of how I view it. So I guess it's kind of the rights to the clip, but it's technically still my clip in a way, I think. So like if I like want to post it down the road on Instagram, like, oh, here's my clips of Corey Kennedy that I filmed from this video, you know, just post it to my Instagram or whatever or something like that. Like, I think that's still good to go. But yeah, I think it's like for the rights, I would say something like that. Yeah. I mean, I'm guessing if you, if they were, would you consider selling the actual ownership of a clip to a company if the price was right? Yeah, I guess that, yeah. If it's like, if they, we got really like legit with it and contract, like this is our footage or whatever, like, and if the price is right, then yeah, it's yours. Like it's all do whatever you want sort of thing for sure. Mm. I mean, I think you, you, I think you've brought this kind of debate to the, uh, to the table at the right time, really, with, you know, yeah. social media and stuff like that. You know, everyone's a fucking filmer these days. And as you said, yep. on the, the uh, mostly skateboarding podcast, with yeah. like people on Instagram and TikTok and all this stuff, you know, yep. do they get paid for when they get stuff reposted and stuff like that? So I think it's a really important term really important yeah. topic to talk, uh, to bring up especially with like the new generation of filmers because yeah, all, yeah. all they might not know like oh hang on maybe i could get paid for this stuff yeah yeah totally yeah 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 especially with the early the next generation because kids are just going to want to do it for free just to get in there get their foot in the door which i get it you know interning working for free and stuff like that i get that stuff but then it kind of like kind of shoots everyone's uh, everyone else in the foot like you know it's like we all need to charge the same amount of money like we got to stick together because companies, I mean, it's just business 101. You're going to go with the person that's going to charge less so you make more money. But then it kind of just kills filming in general and, like, the creativity and, like, all that sort of stuff kind of correlates with it. But, yeah, hopefully we can all, like, really band together and make something happen, start the revolution or whatever. <laughs> not not let every, Yeah, <laughs> not let everybody walk on, on the filmers anymore kind of to an extent. And it sucks. I don't want to, like, come off like I'm complaining or I'm being bitter or whatever, like, but I just see it for what it is. And like, it's just, it's a bummer. It is sad. I don't think it comes across like that at all. I mean, yeah, it's having self-worth. Yeah. It's be, it's believing in yourself and knowing what you are owed by a company or by yeah. whoever, you know, you, yeah, you, yeah. you buy the fucking camera, you buy the, the, the tapes, the recorder, the P2 yeah. cards, whatever you spend 10 yeah. grand on an extreme. Yeah. The least they can do is give you a a hundred dollars for a yeah. clip. Totally, yeah, at least, right? Yeah, it's yeah, it's wild, and just all the time, and like, especially when you get to like, I would say like my age or something, you've dedicated so much of your life to trying to perfect this skill, and there's such a if you think about it, like all the humans on this planet, like, and the population of people that can film skateboarding well is such a tiny percent, so it is kind of a rarity of like a unique ability to have. And I'm not saying like, I'm like a good filmer or like I'm some Ty Evans or Jason yeah. Hernandez, but like, I'm just saying like, that's like a very unique ability that you should get confiscated for like dedicating so much of your life and your time and your body, like your back, like to be able to get like, at least pay them well. Like I'm not saying you're going to make tons of money, but like enough to survive and like pay the bills. And especially if you end up having a wife and a kid or a mortgage, like just something to be able to like, because otherwise like, those people will leave like they'll leave the industry they won't be filming anymore and you're going to lose those talented people who are making your company look good with their ability to film and edit well or whatever like if you're not going to treat them right and 
maybe that's a part of it why skate videos in my opinion aren't that good anymore like those guys have left like which i know a lot of them have like uh, yeah i know like jason hernandez films like other stuff more production work and like and now we're just getting long. these now we're yeah now we're just getting these 15 minute long hd videos that people just film dad cam and like people are just chopping heads left and right like i feel like people don't care like i'm like dude it's not a number one rule don't chop heads like try to be as good as you can to film the skater perfectly in the frame and people just kind of shove that extreme fi a fish eye and they're like a mark one fish eye. it's like you're just chopping heads like that's poor filming like actually try to film good like try like i feel like people don't try anymore and maybe yeah that maybe that all comes back to people not getting paid right now everyone's just kind of lazier or i mean there's i'm sure there's a lot of correlations with all of that but maybe that's one of them i mean it's a, it's a really tricky one this because you've got everyone's got a camera in their phone yeah. you know everyone can film yeah but the art of filming well yeah seems to be fading Totally, totally. And yeah, so yeah. the value of the footage, yeah. does that go down? Because anyone can fucking film. So it's like, oh, yeah. well, why should we pay the homie, you know, his gut, his fucking friend because he filmed it on a phone, you know? Yeah. Or it, is it like, no, actually, because we're probably going to be making money no matter the, you know, who filmed it on what. Yeah. We're still going to be making money from this guy's work, you know, as yeah. a collaborative thing still. We should... You know, should we pay him and stuff like that? And I think it's a, it's a tricky one. Yeah, it, it is. Really yeah, is. Yeah, it is. Yeah, a lot of nuance uh, to it. Yeah. yeah, of course. And like as you said, like a lot of like the OG filmers nowadays are like they're just working other stuff because they need to pay the bills. And like yeah. clearly, like maybe if they're lucky and they're on salary, like I mean, you mentioned Chris yeah. Ray in the yeah. other podcast. You know, like he's on DC. Is he? I think he's still a DC. Yeah, I, I don't. Yeah, I wonder, I wonder if he is like staff or if he just like is one of their contractors and like does work with them. But I know he does like, yeah, a lot of other filming stuff, too. He's he's a hard worker for sure. Yeah, of course. I mean, like, yeah, I mentioned in a previous episode of the podcast, like maybe filmers should start getting sponsored by like camera camera manufacturers. Like I know Chris has done stuff with like GoPro and stuff, but maybe yeah, like yeah. hard drive manufacturers, you know, like I know Johnny yeah. Wilson did something with um what's it called sandgate or whatever it's uh -huh. called. You know, yeah 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 ssd yeah. people like maybe yeah. they could look at like sponsoring yeah. them with hard drives or ssds or something and a bit of money totally, or whatever yeah. to like put yeah, it in the yeah. video you know but i think there's or even patreon yep yeah you know have you ever thought about that i have a i made a patreon but i haven't really dove into how to use it um that's just that's on me you know but yeah it'd be cool to try to spark that up and just yeah, Steve, to make just a little bit extra money. Every every dollar counts. Like everything helps, especially when you're, you know, working in such a niche industry that's such a small industry. And there's, I mean, I get it. Like, uh, you know, I'm talking about filmers getting paid right. And I understand it's not a huge industry. It's not like we're working in some crazy tech industry where there's a lot of money to be made. So I get it. Like, you're not going to make a lot of money, but just get paid decently. So it'd be cool to, like, yeah, try to maybe see what's up with Patreon, see if make a couple extra bucks there and put out content for people that, you know, they want to see. And I think it's also the attitude that you're like, oh, you're begging for money. Yeah, like, yeah, right. There's no, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. As long as you're not being, like, egregious, you know, yeah. like really in your yeah, face yeah. about it. It's like, like, for me, like, in the description of, like, the, the, the H3X tutorial or whatever, yeah. I'll put, like, the coffee.com link, like, oh, if you liked what I did and you want to support me... Yeah, it took yeah. Me like two or three quid, that'll buy me a yeah. coffee or something, you know. Yeah, totally. Yeah, just yeah. Just little bits like that, you know. And I think yeah. we got to get out. I'm not sure if it's for everyone, but I feel like there's a large group of people with a mindset like, oh, I don't want to do that because it'll look like I'm begging or I'm, I'm like desperate yeah. or something like totally. that. Totally. Like, yeah. Fuck that. Yeah. Fuck totally. That whole exactly, attitude. Yeah. We got to get out of it. No, totally. That's that's me for sure. I definitely have a problem with that. Like, I I have a hard time asking for help. I just. It's just me personally. It's just one of my downfall traits, but I always just feel like I'm a burden if I ask for help, but I got to like stop that. I know I need to stop that. I'm like, no, you can ask for help, Shane. Like you're, you you owe, you can do that. Like, so I'm definitely trying to get better at that for sure. Yeah. Sure, man. I mean, like yeah. whenever like, like you see it a lot more recently, especially like in America with the healthcare system and stuff, you know, you get skateboarders who get injured. Patreon yeah. or not Patreon, like a kick, uh, Kickstarter or whatever it is. Yeah, you know, yeah, like a Go yeah. fund me. That's it. Yep. You know, yeah. and there'll be like tons of pros, amateurs, just randoms donating money to like support the cause and stuff like that. Yeah. I don't see why 
there isn't any GoFundMe. He's like, oh, I mean, there are. Like when people's cameras get stolen. Yeah, or, yeah. You know, like just like, hey, I just want, I want to get a video premiere or something like that. I think people yeah. shouldn't be ashamed of that. Totally, totally, one hundred percent. Until yeah. the industry, I sound like fucking Che Guevara. Like, <laughs> like until the industry changes and realizes yeah. that probably apart from the you know the skater being probably one of the most valuable assets, if it wasn't for yeah. the fucking for the filmers, the photographers, and whoever else, yeah, yeah, you wouldn't see these motherfuckers. Exactly, yeah, and it's crazy too. Like, skate companies, um, like their professional skaters have to pay for their own health insurance, like. That's, That's kind of wild. crazy. Isn't that wild? That like I think about I try to think about any of the other professional sport. Like I'm sure like NBA, you know, they they get taken care of for injuries or health insurance, but skaters like Corey has to pay for his own health insurance because he is like technically like an independent contractor for girl skateboards. And I'm sure that is for like all the other professional skaters. So that's kind of a weird thing when you think about other professional sports or like if you want to call skating a sport or whatever. But like, yeah, that's pretty wild to think about. I mean, not even just for the skaters, like, you take a bad fall with a fucking HPX Extreme. Oh, dude, I'm literally coming off an injury right now. Like, last summer in July, I was filming a friend, and I was filming him, like, in front with the VX at the schoolyard, and I hit this metal grate, but this metal grate had, like, a little handle popping up, and it caught the wheels, threw me forward. I saved the VX, and I shoulder-checked right into the concrete, and I tore my AC ligaments in my shoulder. So now, like, my collarbone, or my shoulder bone, look at that, it just pops up it's permanently, it doesn't, it's like totally jacked and it's still not hundred percent healed. Like I destroyed this shoulder. I've broken this collarbone filming as well. Like I've literally destroyed my body filming. And I don't have, apparently I don't have any more cartilage in my left knee anymore from like years of filming fish. I like pushing regular and like I've worn out my left knee. Like, yeah, I've destroyed my body filming. I mean, also skating, but yeah, it's funny to think about. I'm like, that comes out of my bills. Like, so yeah, you've had to, so crazy. every, in, so every injury, relating to filming you've paid for yourself yeah 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 it's it's all on me yeah yeah but you know i get it like i'm you know it's an it's a it's a tricky thing to do it's a dangerous sport or hobby whatever like i get it but it's yeah it's funny how much filmers do dedicate their lives and their bodies to this to everything we do and this is this oh man this is what pisses me off the most is like it's, never mind in britain we've got the nhs we're blessed to have free health care uh-huh. yeah yeah but especially for american filmers god damn like oh it's the worst um uh, and and I'll, I'll be honest i'm so poor that i qualify for our like welfare health insurance i um so that's look i'm thankful i do have that but it's kind of a funny thing because like it's so budget here in america like i can't even like if i caught a cold and like i felt really sick and i wanted to go see the doctor with my health insurance i'm not going to get an appointment for like two months out so it's like well i'm probably going to be fine by then or i'm dead so what's the point of even having this health insurance? And then this, the tricky part around that is like, if you do want to see a doctor, you have to go to the ER. You have to, that's the only way you can see someone the same day. So now you have to go to the ER to see someone for uh, a thing that might not be an ER related injury. And it's kind of like, it's our health insurance is so jacked. It's, it's insane. <laughs> it sucks. It's wild. I'm I'm surprised that, I mean, I'm sure for like staff owners and stuff like that, I'm sure they probably covered under some sort of, yeah, I would hope so, like, right? Yeah. If, if they're actually not just independent freelance yeah, yeah. or whatever. If you're, like, yeah, if you're legit an employee, yeah. Yeah, I, I, so, I wonder, anyway. I should ask my, I got a buddy who shoots photos for Soltech, and he's like an employee for Soltech, I believe, or he was, or still is. But yeah, I wonder if he gets health insurance. I wonder how that works too for, yeah. that'd be Yeah, I should hit him up and ask him about that. That'd be curious to know. I mean, especially with Soltech being as big as it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, yeah, yeah, yeah. That'd be cool to actually find out. I just I'm surprised that there's even like how everything is in America at the moment. The fact that there isn't healthcare for the skaters or the filmers or photographers yeah. or whatever. Yeah. You know, and I'm surprised they haven't all just jumped ship and come here. To be honest, <laughs> it's like... dude, it's it's insane. It's so wild how like how amazing America is, but then how dumb it is at the same time. It's it's such an interesting country. Yeah, it's I mean, so you've got funny. this amazing landscape, the culture, the history, yeah. but the fucking politics, man. Oh, it's wild. I've, I'd, I'm not even that political. I've never gotten into politics. I just can't do it because I just know it's such a joke. So I just yeah, man. stay away from it and just try to live my life the best way I can. <laughs> deal with what you got to do. Yeah, exactly. I got my own things I got to deal with, like keeping my VX working. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing, actually. Like, do, do you think... Um staff film is getting uh, like camera insurance through the company uh, yeah 
I, I would hope they do. I do renter's insurance. So I pay monthly for my renter's insurance, which covers my camera gear if something happens. So, you know, I'm just paying that out of pocket. But yeah, that'd be, I've never thought about that. That'd be smart. I mean, I would hope so, right? That the, the companies would help out their filmers for that gear and all the craziness that does happen with skating and cameras getting hit by boards and theft or whatever. But yeah. Of course, especially with like the price of like the Mark One and the Extreme and yeah. stuff like that. Yeah, all the rare, yeah, how rare they are and stuff. I probably should just sell my extreme and buy another minivan or something. <laughs> <laughs> or just, ha- or, yeah. <laughs> buy a house. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Put a down payment on a house or just help pay off my credit cards because I'm definitely in debt with all the, I'm still like paying off debt for making pump on this. Like, wow. It's just, it's funny. Like, it's just, yeah, you think you're going to make some money, but you're making no money off this. <laughs> like, you're just losing money. <laughs> I remember like Dan Wolf said, um, like, the, the smartest thing you can do as a filmer is not go into debt. Yeah, literally, yeah. Or just, something like yeah. that. And he was like, oh, I went into debt to like get a VX or like yeah. to get his like first camera or something. And he was paying it off until like the 2000s. Yeah, totally. And I was yeah. Like, that is insane. Yeah, it's it's wild. Yeah, it's it's insane. <laughs> right, slightly off topic for a second. How much did you spend to get your um, Extreme? Um, I bought my I bought my Extreme from my buddy Brandon Jensen, who uh, he's the filmer for RVCA. And he made Be or Sasquatch, that video from Seattle that Corey is a part in. He sold me his extreme years ago and, and, the, and the support the support rails for it. Um, dude, I don't even remember, maybe like fifteen hundred bucks or something. Like it was it wasn't like a crazy amount of money, but like it was, seemed legit, you know, which yeah. I'm sure it was at the time. But um it, it has a little scratch on it, but it's not that bad. It doesn't really show up on footage. But yeah, that's the same one I've had for years now that my buddy Brandon sold to me. And he's like a good friend, so maybe he kind of did cut me a little deal on it, but yeah, that's I've had that one forever now. God damn. Have you got yeah. the uh, Tadashi filter for it? Yeah, yeah, I definitely run those on the Mark 1 on the HPX like I'll go out and like film with other homies who don't use them and it's like giving me a panic attack. I'm like, "Are you serious right now? Like what? Like it, they're not that much money and like and like that dude, I've yeah, I don't know why people don't use them and like especially with they, how close they get. It's wild, dude. It's like how can you risk it? Like I just can't see it. And like I know like the Tosh filters are sick and it is like plexiglass. And what I've come to realize, like the plexiglass or whatever, like it gets very staticky very easily. So dust does collect easy, which is a bit of a downside. But there's this other solution. It's like this spray stuff called Brilliance. And like it's an anti static solution. So just get a bottle of that and just spray that on, you know, wipe it down before you start filming. And like that kind of counteracts that downside of the Tosh filter, but it works great. Oh, wow. So just do that and you're, you're golden pretty much. Like I think it works great for me. Man, shout out to Dashi. Holy shit. Yeah, like, yeah. Completely yeah. underrated, I'd say. Totally. Yeah. It's definitely, it's, yeah, I go through them all the time. Like the VX, the Mark 1 still gets hit and I just, and then I'll buy, I'll buy another one from them. Like, yeah, it's definitely, I think it's worth it. Yeah. For He's sure. He's such a, such a nice guy. Yeah. 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 It's, he hooks it up. Like, I, I'm super thankful because I'll, you know, I'll buy one, I'll shout it on Instagram and like I'll buy another one and he'll send me maybe like one or two extras for free, like, because he knows I'm, hyping them up and trying to plug it for him. So I'm super thankful for that, for sure. Man, man. I mean, like, I think he just does it out of his house as well. Probably, yeah. It's a genius idea. It really is, yeah. I remember speaking to him, like, during, like, lockdown one of COVID. Uh-huh, and, yeah. Um, he was um, asking me about... He was actually inquiring... I don't know if I should... I'll, I'll keep it in. He was inquiring yeah. about, like, making a Mark I, uh-huh. like, copy. Like, mm-hmm. you know, you the Optekers are, like, MK2 ripoffs. He yeah, wanted to yeah, figure yeah. out if he could make an MK1 yeah. clone, like Dude, legit. Be, and it was like, that'd be so str- sick. And I was like, mate, if you do that, you'll be the richest motherfucker oh, in all dude. of fucking LA. Just killing it. Yeah. <laughs> just owning that niche market. Like, just, oh my God, that'd be so rad. God <laughs> damn. That'd be yeah. so good. I think he was like close to doing it as well. Like, because, like, I th- yeah. uh, the people who make the Optekers, you can just be like, yo, I want this measurement i want this type of glass you know i think you can uh-huh. even tell them just copy another one yeah and i yeah. think they could do it dude i know especially in this day and age with like how technology's advanced like you th- and like there's like 3d printers that you can have at home and all this stuff like you think it'd be pretty easy could be yeah, doable for sure right maybe yeah. this maybe us mentioning it will be enough yeah. to like spur someone like, oh fucking hell maybe you could do that and then in like a yeah. year's time like here we go you know, and they're selling it for like four or five hundred yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Dang. That'd be insane. Yeah, they get the ball rolling. That'd be rad. That'd be cool. Someone do it, yeah. please. <laughs> yeah, someone, someone out there, it. please. I'll pay you. I'll I'll buy five of them. <laughs> someone will invest. So I mean, yeah. help. Get Rob to do it. Someone. Yeah. Come on, someone, please. <laughs> I want to mention 
uh, something that you mentioned, or if I can double mention, uh, uh-huh. in the Mostly Skateboarding podcast, you kind yeah. of briefly mentioned the idea of a filmer's union. Yeah. Um, you did, <laughs> I, I kind of, I, I don't know, from the, from the episode, it kind of yeah. sounded like you I, weren't too fussed on it, almost. I, I guess, like, it's just more of, like, an idea, because I don't really know how unions work, and I'm sure there's so much that goes into it. You know, it's just kind of a funny thing to say, I guess. But it is... But I mean, at the end of the day, that would be nice. Like I have, you know, learned that unions are pretty rad and they help people out. And especially, yeah, when you're just getting the short end of the stick all the time, it does make sense. But I'm sure that's just me dreaming, you know, or just, or maybe not even have a union, but skate companies just realize like, yeah, we need to take care of filmers better. And hopefully that would help help out too and make things change for the better. I mean, I think it would be, beyond a fantastic idea i honestly yeah i mean i'm trying to find right now i wrote oh, it's gonna sound so communist i wrote <laughs> up a kind of filmers union manifesto stick like two years ago two or three uh-huh. years ago and i was like yeah if i was gonna do it this is like oh here we go found it okay i'll try and read it to you yeah here we go the is oh, what did i call it the isfpeu that's Sick. a that's a fuck. The Independent Skateboard Filmers Photographers Editors Union Manifesto. Yes. <laughs> I've never actually released this, so this is a world uh-huh. first, I guess. Yes, okay. yes. The ISFPEU is a union dedicated to the filmers, photographers, and editors who work independent uh, of skateboard companies and magazines. The ones who dedicate countless hours, days, and sometimes weeks to documenting skateboarding. For a long time now, independent workers would either get underpaid for their work or flat out not paid at all. Even without payment, simple things like properly getting credited for their work goes out of the window due to negligence. This union is hopefully being set up to, yeah. <laughs> to represent those who work uh, to those who aren't on the payroll and have to pay out of their pocket for equipment, travel and expenses and to ensure the proper credit they deserve. Goals to negotiate proper payment with companies and magazines and ensure a healthy working relationship continues, to put claims in for stolen footage and demand proper credit or payment to uh, to the original creator, to support the community as much as possible, either by promoting work, giving technical support when needed and having a platform to discuss issues within the community and the skateboard industry, to ensure credit is given where... uh, to ensure credit to the correct people when footage, photos, and edits of theirs have been used uh, on YouTube channels, and to inform people of their rights when it comes to copyright. Dude, nailed it. Dude, let, let's get it going. We got to start the union. <laughs> I, we need a flag. Yeah, time to unionize. <laughs> For real, I just it doesn't make sense how it hasn't happened yet. Yeah, it's funny. Yeah, it's, you think about any other videography and industries and like. It's just so much more set up. But I guess that's just the skateboarding industry in general. Like, it's just so chaotic. Like, I feel like a big part of the skate industry is just all these skateboarders who didn't go to school for business, but want to continue living in the skateboarding culture. So you start your own company and then you're running your own company, but you don't really know how to run a company. And that's just kind of the big part of the skateboard industry. It's all these skaters just learning as they go trying to be a business person or like economics or things like that. It's kind of funny how the whole skate world is. Like the kid in like a big suit. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, literally. That's the skate industry it is. We're just all idiots. (laughs) Oh, man. Yeah. With, um, again, surprise skaters don't have a union. The filmers don't have a union. Yeah. Who the fuck is going to be the one that does it? Because it needs to happen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, even the most nichest of jobs I've found out have yeah. unions like Crazy. the news yeah. news cameramen just the news cameramen alone yeah. have a union amazing yeah like where is ours yeah yeah exactly yeah dude that that's crazy yeah yeah it is yeah i like genuinely like looked up how you do it. it's like you know you kind of you organize you get you have meetings you, uh-huh. i know some of them that you pay into as well that like you can get lawyers if you need them and that kind of yeah, thing yeah. and it's kind of uh, a more social effort to um look after each other yeah. I think people would be willing to do that. Totally, yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm not, yeah. I'm not talking like ridiculous money as well. I'm talking, I, you know, yeah. just 20, get taken care of. 30 a month, maybe? Yeah, yeah. Just be, yeah, taken care of. It's, yeah, it's not that hard, yeah. Absolutely. Maybe Dang, I need to sick. fucking do it. But yeah, post that, dude. Let's make that thing go viral. Holy shit. You get, you get, get, the, word, get the word out there. <laughs> it might, you know what? I mean, with your post and how much traction that got, maybe yeah, it yeah. is like... Dude, this is the time, right? To yeah, put it out. 
and then like today like that thing that jankum jankum just did that thing too about like they they took my instagram topic and now they're talking about it like yeah it's kind of that was i was surprised i was like oh sick all right now we're talking yeah, i mean it's Getting cool to hear out. the um what those fucking skaters actually think of it as well yeah true yeah yeah like they back it and they're like no yeah yeah get your money get paid yeah totally i mean they. And it's I mean, funny the, yeah. yeah it's funny i haven't really heard anyone trying to counteract it but it it'd be interesting like if people are like that don't think that's legit like i'm like but where are you coming from then? Like, are you just some rich person? Like, who doesn't like? <laughs> there's something I feel like, yeah, it'd be interesting to like hear the other side of people try to combat that issue or whatever. But, I mean, yeah. it'll really show some colors that are like, well, you know, I don't think it'll be very good for the industry. It's like, what are you talking about? Yeah, like, there is no way you can, like, yeah, unless you're just some rich person hoarding all the money. <laughs> unless you're the owner of a skateboard company. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> who doesn't want to pay out? Yeah. <laughs> God damn. Right. Totally. I think I think it's time to go to questions from a certain social media platform. Oh nice, yeah, yeah. That has ruined skateboarding. Hit. Yeah, <laughs> the downfall. <laughs> skateboarding is all because of social media. <laughs> right. Now I know for a fact we had like a whole buttload, but I have a feeling we uh -huh. have oh wow, there's a few there's a few more. God <laughs> damn. Right. Oh fuck. Okay, so there's um quite a few. <laughs> nice nice <laughs> you're, i think so far you're winning the award of the most amount of questions <laughs> if, I, there's some I, good ones maybe you can join the union for free um, yeah <laughs> okay so we'll start from the beginning so we got jwd harris james um just interviewed him for the podcast the fucking nice. Sick. so it's not a question but thank you for using fantagram uh in some of your edits oh, great music sick. nice yeah yeah Fucking Dang, love Fantagram. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Another one from oh, him. Yeah. Uh, fa also, thank him for Sasquatch. That vid inspired a lot of people. <laughs> Shout out to Brandon Jensen, who did be where Sasquatch. I helped, helped out filming for it, too, before I moved to LA. But yeah, Brandon, dude, that video, once again, such a classic Seattle video. So epic. We got another question. Actually, got a few from this person. Uh, Motag Farrow. I'm sure you know them. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's Ar Ariel. She's the homie. Yeah. Ah, okay. Legend. Yeah. So... Ariel's first question is top five homie skaters, no pros. Dang, no pros. Um, I don't top five in any order. Uh let's just go off people I'm skating with right now. Uh Travis, Johnny, uh I guess it's just all the homies I'm skating with. Travis, Johnny, my roommate Corey. Um, who else? Oh, yeah, we're not doing no pros, no pros. Um uh Phil. Phil's a sick filmer that just moved to LA. Phil's the man. Uh, and Mitch is our homie from Spokane, Washington that moved down. Mitch is so good at skating. I really hope something takes off for Mitch, but I think that's five right there. All right. Fair. Another question from Ariel. Bit of a specific one. What uh -huh. is your dating app bio? Dating app bio. Um, let's see here. Are you on the Should Tinders? I'm on like four apps, man. I'm trying. I'm, I got, I, I got you're gray a handsome, in the beard. Yeah. You're a handsome young man. How are you not? How are you struggling? I got gray in the beard. It's definitely nah. showing off now. Uh, you embrace the gray fox. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, yeah. It's just sit going on dates. You're like, yeah, what do you do for a living? I'm like, oh, I film skateboarding. They're like, wait, what? I'm like, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, dating bio. What's on the dating bio info? I don't know. Let's see if I can find one real quick. Um, something along the lines of. I definitely, where, where is it? I talk about like trying to, saying that I'm adventurous, love outdoors, love camping, love getting under the stars, hopeless romantic. Oh, I'm, I'm falling hit, in I, love. I, oh yeah, I hit it all with the good stuff. Yeah, something along those lines. We'll sum it up. But yeah, uh, any single ladies out there in LA, if you want to date a skateboard filmer, I'm here. I'll take you on a great adventure, show you a great time. Good I'll guy. show you how to use a VX1000. Yeah, I will tell you all the best Star Wars knowledge that I have. <laughs> You will be then, my Padawan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You'll not want to go on a second date with me. <laughs> That's a good point. Would you date a skater? Oh, for sure. Yeah, I've I've dated one in the past. I've dated one girl that was an avid skater. And like, yeah, I back it for sure. I think the dopest thing to find in a partner is like a, your other part, like your partner having a hobby as well, having something they love. I think that's a good balance for like a healthy relationship for sure. That's nice. I've def yeah, I've definitely seen like, other friends with girlfriends in the past that they're such an avid skater but that girlfriend might not have like a hobby like we have and they kind of creates some jealousy because we're always trying to skate and be with our friends 
but that other partner doesn't really have something like that. So it kind yeah. of becomes lo lonesome for them, which I've seen in the past. It's created like some, you know, hecticness. You but... get quite bitter. Yeah, totally, totally, for sure, yeah. I'm curious, what is your profile picture on your dating app? I'm just let's, curious. No, let's pull it up. Let's find one. Let's um, see this handsome young man. What are we working with here? Go to this one. Let's see if the exposure works. Uh, it's probably going to auto-exposure with the phone. Oh. Hey. There you go. That's a great my, picture. My, that's my buddy Zach. Zach's a friend and a great graphic designer. He helps me with skate rat graphics, and he nice. does graphic designs for like video games here in LA. Oh, cool. Um, yeah, he's a, he just drew that up. Like, it's a photo of me when we were getting <laughs> breakfast one morning. Zach's the man. <laughs> I love Zach. He recently just did that VX Millennium Falcon graphic that we put out. You like, sent me that like a year ago, and I was like yeah. holding my tongue. I was like, fuck, that's so sick. <laughs> oh. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, uh, I hit up Zach. I was like, Zach, can you somehow morph the VX like into the Millennium Falcon? He's like, I got you. And like, <laughs> dude, this is exactly what I had envisioned in my mind. So uh, Zach's the best. I hit him up when I have ideas and he'll help me like make graphics because like that's not really my department. I'm not the best drawer. But yeah, shout out to Zach Reinhardt. You're the, you're the best. I got to get me one of those fucking stickers. Good. Yeah, I'll, I'll, send, I'll send you some. Don't worry. I got Wee! you. Oh, yeah. you don't have to do that. Come on. I uh, will. <laughs> okay, another one <laughs> from a... Who's the best homie in uh, WA? I'm guessing that's Washington. In Washington? Best homie in Washington? Uh, oh, um, to crash oh, with. To crash with. Oh, definitely Ariel. <laughs> 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 I got. Uh, I was in Washington this summer uh, helping doing some work with Street League because the last Street League stop was in Seattle area. And um, I stayed with Ariel, staying at her place. And the last day of Street League got COVID. Woke up that morning just so dead. Like, I'm like, oh my God, I feel. And I thought it was because of like the last three days of filming Street League was like 10 hour days. So I thought I was just exhausted, you know? Battled through the day of Street League, finished the last day of the finals, and then just went back and like, I was just dead. And Ariel had some COVID tests and I did a COVID test and I forgot COVID for my first time. But thank you, Ariel, for like letting me stay at your place and like just dying of COVID on your couch. <laughs> <laughs> and she, luckily, she didn't get COVID either. She already had it, but like, luckily, she was fine. But Got that good quarantine. immune system. Let, let, yeah, let me quarantine there. Another one from Ariel. Clearly mega fan. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, it's kind of a repeat, actually, to what we talked about earlier, which was um, uh -huh. what got you into filming. So we'll gloss over that one. And um, it also says, what got you into skating? Got me into skating. Oh, so pretty much, uh, I don't know if, so you're in the UK over there. Do, do you remember the movie Brink? It was like a Disney Channel movie about rollerbladers. I don't know if it... <laughs> um it's probably it, i think it's been shown here i can't remember it pr though. probably it was like a class of like disney channel movie when i was like 12 or that age group you know that era yeah and when brink came out it was like kind of my first experience or like vision of like extreme sports because like in brink there's like the rollerblader crew like inline skating there's like skateboarders and bmxers and like and right in that era too was when the x games kind of came back as well as well so like that was my, my i'm like whoa extreme sports i love this this is like me and like, so I got like rollerblades, skateboard, like a BMX bike, like, and then skating was the one that like took my heart, you know? So like that, I would shout out to Brink. I think definitely introduced me to like extreme sports and then skating came about from there. <laughs> I mean, everyone's got to start somewhere, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. And I'm like, I grew up way out in the woods. So like that I know where to skate, like we don't have sidewalks. Like, so it was just like me trying to build ramps in our barn and like, just like, and shout out to my dad. He's, my dad was like, he built our house like great handyman like was super down to help us build ramps and show us how to use tools and stuff like that so like nice. thank you dad <laughs> legend yeah i think when you come from like those kind of smaller towns and stuff like that it does kind of breed a um a certain creativity that you don't totally, get from. i yeah. mean you, obviously you get talented people in the cities and stuff but when you're kind yeah. of isolated from like all outside sources especially in the age before like internet and you know yep. access to skate videos that easily you kind of have to make it up as you go along totally, and i think yeah. that does especially help with like doing things your own way and kind of yep. doing it really uniquely and originally yeah a lot more character development that's for sure <laughs> oh for sure yeah <laughs> yeah yeah next question harry dean another welsh filmer oh dude harry og legend right there yeah he's been supporting skate arts forever shout out really? harry yeah with the hvx probably the only one with a, like an extreme in all of wales yeah <laughs> so you prefer doing projects for companies or for yourself with skate rats definitely i end of the day always just skate with the homies like it's just so much funner like i mean i love working with companies but 
just that group of your friends like doing your own project will always be like the funnest vibes for sure also p.s how's Corey? Corey's good yeah we just uh if anyone watching this uh we just i mean Corey. i visited Corey in washington last summer he his state probation is done so Corey's totally free and everything now nice. he can leave the state of washington and so we kind of celebrated um, doing a road trip and skating and camping with friends. And I made a whole video and sold it to Girl and Girl just posted it. So head over to like Cradle Taps YouTube and you can watch this new video Corey and I put out. And there's new footage of Corey there and stuff. But yeah, super fun. He's doing good, getting back in the groove of things, skating. So definitely more Corey footage coming soon for sure. Fuck yeah. Yeah. Okay. Al Hodgson, another fucking homie. Uh, favorite Corey clip or Sebo clip that you filmed? Favorite Corey clip, um, probably like it would probably go back to that first day of street skating. Him and I went out and he did that front people down 10, 11 rail, whatever it was. It's in Muckleteal, Washington. Just like that clip is so embedded in my mind because I've never had filmed someone on that level of skating before. So that will just be so nostalgic. And clip of SIBO would probably be that nollie flip down the stable or the yeah, LA Convention Center hubba. Like yeah, that was just insane but it was i've never like yeah just like actually making me scared you know like just that feeling will make it like one of the favorite clips of SIBO for sure <laughs> <laughs> that guy's too fucking uh, like even just that little weekend thing you did up in his house yeah holy shit yeah. The, yeah, he's, he's so fucking good yeah he's so yeah very so quick on getting clips and also just such a nice human being like SIBO's yeah. the best like and really nice artist. dude yeah yeah he kills it yeah yeah and he's a great dad he's got uh, he's got one kid and they got another kid coming along. So yeah, oh, nice. he's the dope skate dad for sure. I think having kids as a skater really brings you back down to earth. Yeah, totally. Yeah, for sure. I yeah. Look at um, Rob Plahowski. Like when uh -huh. he had his first kid and like got kicked off Habitat. You know, yeah. it's like, that's it. I'm like, you know, growing up. Al also asks, we kind of covered this, um, about the, uh -huh. how did you make the Millennium Falcon graphic? Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah um if anyone doesn't know it i'm definitely a big star wars nerd has i've been since i was a kid I've, i love sci-fi and everything i'm just a nerd but um yeah the homie zach put that i, I had the idea and zach brought it to life fuck it i'll talk about star wars for a minute because yeah i went most of my i i have the original trilogy on vhs uh -huh. sick sick like like the box set as well so i'm like holy shit like i i, I watched it as a kid never yeah. watched another star wars thing up until last year like my uh -huh. best friend was staying with me for a, yeah uh, like a month and it's like you're gonna sit down we're gonna watch the clone wars yeah and like <laughs> you're gonna watch the entire series and i want to see if you like it and uh -huh. so i didn't watch anything i didn't watch skate edits i didn't watch tv didn't watch youtube yeah. videos all i watched was the clone wars for Sick. about a month uh-huh i'm hooked yeah like it, i the fucking love it <laughs> it's yeah. so and good it's, and that's the sick part too i mean it sucks that like when Disney bought Star Wars, like they just haven't really done a good job with it. But the Clone Wars, like the animated series, um, uh, Dave Filoni is the guy who like made that. And Dave Filoni works with like he was like kind of George Lucas, like Padawan. So like and that dude is just legit. Like so if Dave's name's attached to any Star Wars project, he pretty much knows it's going to be good because he actually like worked for Lucasfilm back when George had it. Like he's he's the goat. So we all love Dave Filoni. Keep killing it with his Star Wars stuff because He's, yeah, he's doing a good job. <laughs> I mean, you can, I'm sure some people do, they kind of goof on um, George for all the things he's done in the past and stuff, but like, yeah. kind of if it wasn't for him, we, you know, I mean, I'm sure digital would have come about, but like, he was kind of one of the first people to do digital filmmaking, like totally, on like a yeah, high-end yeah. scale, like on the yeah, yeah. Sony HD camera. Yeah. You know, God damn. Yeah, he definitely, yeah, he's changed the game for sure. Yeah, it's rad. I can't remember what am I watching now. I'm on. I'm, I've started watching. I'm trying to do it in order of like. Yeah, yeah. The law of Star Wars. I've kind yeah, of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Started watching the Bad Batch a bit cheekily. Oh yeah, totally, totally. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Oh my god, so good. Yeah, it's sick. I think we should stop talking about Star Wars. We'll be here for a few hours. <laughs> Al asks pros and cons of using the Firestore FS5 over other tapeless options um pros that i it's really easy to use very simple just record stop record and you can just and i like that i can just flip it to playback on the vx and it'll play the last clip that i just filmed so i can check the clip really fast um downside is that i think 
I talked to someone else on Instagram about this, but there's like in, within the device, there's like an internal battery, like a watch battery. And I think that powers something about doing the dates of the files or whatever. Cause, and I think that battery is done. It's like dusted. So when I plug it in and mount it to the computer, pulled up or like it's mounted as a hard drive and I see all the files, the files aren't in order. Like first clip filmed to the last clip filmed. That's all dated, like just with one date. And I think it's because of that internal like watch battery that is fried or is dead. So that's a downside. So I still kind of have to go through the clips and find, I still will mark the clips so I can find my hand. But one thing I've done now because of that issue, if the phone, if they, they land the clip, I'll let the keep recording. I'll hold my hand there for a good amount of time. So the file size is much larger. So then when I go to the finder, I click go by file size and all those, those fat file size are the makes. And that's where I can find them quicker. So that's like my little hack in case anyone out there's yeah, dealing with the same issue. That's a really clever way of doing it. Yeah, so that's what I've been running as of now, so I can find the makes faster. Especially with like, um, I, I mean, you can mark the like for me anyway, like because I'm more used to like the HPX and stuff. You can yeah. mark the clip, but yeah. it doesn't like when you plug it into the computer, it doesn't show like a little M or anything like that. It's just yeah. all there, and so yeah, I, yeah. you do have to go for all of it to look for it. So that actually kind of makes a lot more sense. Look for the yeah, just the, the bigger file clip. size. Just let just let it record a little longer and create the file size larger. Yeah. Josh is alive with a free, being very cool there. What do you believe will be the next evolution in skateboard filming? Next evolution. Honestly, I feel like by the time we get like the iPhone 19 or something, like, dude, we'll just we'll just be filming on these things. Like it's just it's crazy how high tech these things are. And like it'd be interesting if like one day if like well, this is what we'll be using. Like it's kind of crazy. Like it's so Maybe that will happen one day. It's I'm pretty interested to see where that goes and like how crazy these phones get with the quality and like then just be able to customize, I don't know, film four by three or whatever, you know. So That'd be that's kind of that's something I've kind of thought about, too, because, you know, like Apple has like an iPhone 20 probably already made and they will just slowly release like a little bit of new technology with the iPhone 15, the 16. I mean, it's just like it's just how businesses work. They make the money, you know, yeah. so it'd be kind of yeah, it'd be interesting to see what they got down the road. I mean, the fact of the matter is, you know, it can do like HDR, 10 yeah. color and all, you know, 60p and whatever, and you yeah. can put lenses on it. And now yeah. you've got an iPad that can run DaVinci Resolve, which is like a high-end editing platform, which yeah. you can get for free. Yeah, it's proper we're living editing in the, yeah. software. It's crazy. We're living in the future for sure. It's wild. Terrifying. <laughs> yeah, it is. We're going to be it all out true. of a job. <laughs> yeah, and especially with uh, chat GPT or whatever, that AI thing. Like, dude, that is wild. My buddy, Sean Hale, he has it on his phone, and we were driving to a spot the other day, and he pulls it out, and we ask it, like, uh, write us a story about the Skate Rats crew in the Star Wars universe. And it, like that, it just spits out this whole storyline. And, like, 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 the Skate Rat with his lightsaber, like, it's just, like... <laughs> It's it'd be, it's insane if you were a kid in school these days. Like, hey, write me an essay. Boom. Yeah. A plus essay. Like, it's, I couldn't imagine, like, because I didn't go to high school with smartphones. So I don't know what that's like, but I just, it is wild. It is scary. Yeah. It's I mean, crazy. they've got to have something in place to, like, combat right? that, surely. Yeah. This, yeah. Yeah. For sure. But yeah, it's wild. We're living in the future. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I mean, like, um, I, I put into chat GPT or whatever it is. Um, uh -huh, yeah. Like a week ago, I asked it, like, okay. I wanted it to come up with an, a couple of suggestions for songs that I want to use for this part that I'm doing. So yeah, I was like, yeah. okay, so it's an indie video, uh -huh. small town, VX, all this stuff. I didn't think you'd know what a fucking VX is. Yeah, and it yeah. came out with some fucking solid suggestions. Dude, that's so wild. Like Caribou, stuff like that. Like, Caribou's been used in like Spirit Quest. That's uh -huh, legit yeah. shit. I'm like, what yeah. the fuck? How, do, like, How does it know? Yeah. How? Like, it doesn't yeah. make sense. Dude, it's so insane. Can you imagine if it gets to the... Yeah. You know they've got, like, deep fake shit, you know? This yeah, This really yeah. kind of crazy That's stuff. That's wild. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if there's going to be a time where, like, they can make fake skaters. Dude, for sure. And, like, fake like, parts. Literally, yeah. You'll be seeing me skating, like, Hollywood 16. Like, <laughs> wait, what? Like, dude, it, by the time, like, dude, I mean, imagine, like, by the time we're, like, in our 60s, like... That's going to be on every iPhone. It's going to be some little app that kids use to whatever TikTok version's out or something like. Yeah, it's going to be nuts. At least I, I, which is scary. But I also hope medicine gets really dope. Where like, if I need a new knee replacement, it's going to be like that, and 
that'd be nice. <laughs> or even just free healthcare. Yeah, or just some universal healthcare. That'd be just just something just simple, a, something yeah. something easy. Yeah, just a little just something. something. Just a little yeah. something. <laughs> Bernie, where are you, brother? Jude, ha, huh, another homie asked. Four by three versus sixteen by nine. Yeah, four by three all day. It just looks so much better for skating. Like just sixteen by nine, you have so much of that blank space on the side. It kind of just like it loses that epicness and the intensity of watching skating. And four by three keeps it compact and we're so centered on, you know, the excitement from skating. I think it just looks so much better. It just for skating that is, in my opinion. Yeah, for sure. And yeah. I mean for the for the human eye, especially you kind of yeah. see more vertically than I'd say you would horizontally. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. So we're just like we're more focused right there. But yeah, so I'm I'm stoked on like April skateboards. You know, they've been they've been pushing all that four by three HD and Kevin Perez. He so I'm stoked to see people like really trying to like go back to that zone and hopefully it keeps going that way. That'd be cool. Fucking absolutely. I mean, I, th yeah. I think it's the future. Yeah, yeah. Like that. I, I think the first time I saw four by three HD was um, Russell Halton. Russell Halton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He did that um, VX three thousand or nine thousand like red yeah. video for New Balance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was sick. That was like the first time I'd seen. It. I was like, yeah. holy fuck, that's cool. Like, yeah. And that was yeah. like a red camera with like, yeah, like, that really expensive Canon fisheye. I was like, that looks yeah. really good. Yeah. That was like, that's coming up on ten years ago. Dude, for real. Yeah, yeah. It's it's shout out to the guys back then. They're being like the pioneers for that, like Russell and whatnot. Like, that's really cool. I don't see much it, of Russell anymore. Yeah. I mean, there's no money in it. Why would why, why you be filming a skate? You know, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> but, but at the same time, I always like, I'm like, how do people afford red cameras? Like, but I'm also, I mean, I'm poor, so I get it. I don't know. But I, think I, people are in, I think a lot of filmers are in debt. Totally right. Yeah. They just, they took the, yeah, they chopped off their leg for the red camera. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Donal no, Vareloco. Let's go with Donal. Yeah. Sorry, mate. Um, what is the percentage of skaters slash friends actually living or earning enough from skating slash filming? Like 0.5%. Like it's, it's so small. Like the people who are staff or retainer for companies is a very small percentage when it comes to photographers or videographers. It's such a small percent. Like especially in this day and age like 12 years ago totally different ball game but i feel like now it's super small like yeah it's very small so just i mean to be honest like yeah if kids are out there like you know i want to be a professional skateboard filmer like it's not what it used to be it's definitely a different ball game is what it seems like yeah i, I remember um when i was growing up i'd see like those um like the shoot all skaters that the barracks would do. Yeah, yeah. And I'd remember mm -hmm. it was like, oh, you know, if you want to get into it, you know, you just got to really like believe in yourself and all that stuff. And like at the time, I was like, well, yeah, like, maybe I could do it. Yeah. Now that I'm yeah. old, I'm like, I'm never getting a job in the industry. Like, no yeah, it's way it's not going to happen. How it's, yeah, it's changed so drastically. And it'd be so interesting if there's like someone who's like smart enough or like has the knowledge of like studying that and figuring out why it's really changed, like the economics or the inflation or like, I don't know. I'd be fascinated to one day dive into it. I don't know to really figure out why it's so different. And maybe part of it is because like, it's so easy to start a board company now. Like the board market is very flooded. Maybe that's a part of it too. I'm sure it's part of it, but yeah, it's interesting for sure. I mean, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say like, um, just because of how cheap cameras are these days, not even just like excluding the, the VX and the HPX and all the fish eyes and stuff. You can get like yeah. some Sony HD camera for a couple of hundred quid, get a yeah. little cheap fish eye on it and put together a pretty good edit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it's like crazy. the market's just flooded. Yeah, totally, totally. He also asks, kind of relating to what we said before, uh, European trip when? To it. Uh, let me go rob a bank real quick and then we'll get the budget <laughs> for the trip. Yeah. Oh, that'd be so fun. If I could, yeah. If anyone's listening that wants to sponsor a skate rat to European trip, like give us the travel budget. We'll, we'll, I'll come back with great footage. We'll come back with a great edit. I promise. That'd well, be so I can't sick. fund it, but if you're ever in like an area ish, feel free to hit me up. I've got a few, Dude, I've got two I, spare rooms and a few couches. I want to go so bad. Like, just like because i grew up you know in washington that's where i'm from in seattle and then i see like the london skate scene you know like very kind of similar climate so we have like both kind of the same weathered concrete and the roughness and like, like that pacific northwest kind of shit. yeah exactly totally so like i just love watching footage from your guys's neck of the woods because it just uh, 
that weathered concrete it's just the aesthetic you know it's such a cool like viewing skating on it so it'd be so rad to get out there one day and actually do a skate trip and hang out and stuff so one day soon we'll make it happen for sure that'd be rad yeah i'll be yeah. fucking keen on i will show you yeah. the ways of british cuisine which is just Dude. F- fish and chips nice <laughs> <laughs> Donny Films asks, when are the Skate Rat's panties going to restock? Dang, the Skate Rat panties. <laughs> uh, yeah, when I, win the, when I get the budget again to make more Skate Rat's gear, we'll get, some more, uh, we'll get some more Skate Rat panties for everyone's girlfriends out there. <laughs> I was thinking more mankinis, to be honest. But... <laughs> oh, there you go, yeah. Dude, I know uh, Grant made, uh, for a weekend, he made Karsten like some uh, Speedos, like swimwear Speedos with the uh, Norway flag on it for like the Olympics. <laughs> I, I think he put them for sale on the weekend side. I forgot. I've seen them at the weekend warehouse. They're hilarious. But yeah, I want to see Carson wearing those. <laughs> get a Kickstarter to get that to happen. Yeah. So Donnie also asks, how did he get the barracks job and what was it like? Um, so the barracks job came about kind of right time, right place. But um, they were doing the bang yourself contest. And I think it was the second one. And saw, you know, I was following the barracks and then I was like, Corey, let's enter your footage. And it's like, let's do it. So put together 10 clips of Corey, submitted the edit of Corey and his 10 banging tricks. Um, he won the contest and it kind of worked out good because Corey was actually doing a trip to California with Brandon Jensen and the BR Sasquatch crew. All our buddies like a filming trip. And that's when he won it. And they hit up Corey like, hey, you won your first place. Come by the barracks. Like, we'll bring you down. You'll film an edit. And he's like, oh, I'm actually in L.A. already. They're like, oh, sick. Come by. So Corey came by the barracks, filmed his banging, like killed it. And like Steve and Eric, like honestly knew like, dude, you're going to be a pro skater. Like you got to move down here. And Corey was like, yeah, I mean, my buddy Shane, we're thinking about moving down here once I finished high school because Corey was still a senior in high school. And they're like, well, hey, does Shane need a job? We need another filmer right now. Like and Corey's like, yeah, for sure. And like, so Steve called me from Corey's phone. I thought it was, and I was actually on a session skating, filming these guys at this ledge in Shoreline, Washington. And I thought I was like, oh, Corey's going to tell me what the barracks is like. I'm like, dude, what's up? And he's like, oh, so Corey, I'm like, who's this? He's like, this is Steve Barra. And I've never talked to a pro skater. I've never been around. I'm like, oh, what? And he's like, yeah, <laughs> dude, you, we need another filmer. Would you want to come work? I'm like, duh, like, yeah. And so I flew down for two weeks and like interned at the barracks and filmed uh, the Volcom United Nations. And then we did like the RVCA United Nations and some other stuff and like stayed with Steve and he's like, dude, yeah, like go home, pack up, move down here. I was like, all right. So I dropped out of college and packed up and moved to LA when I was 20 years old by myself and been here since. So going about 15 years now, but that's kind of like to sum it up. Yeah. It was a trip. I remember like getting off the flight, went to the barracks and the whole Volcom like tour bus was out front and I've never like filmed pro skaters. And I'm like, this is insane. Like trying to like hold the VX steady, just so nervous filming, like, and like Louis Lopez was like three feet tall, like he was such a little guy. Like, and was that like pre extremely sorry? I th- yeah, it was like right. Yep, it was right before. Because I remember oh, after wow. I moved down, I went to the premiere for that, and like, and like it was it was so surreal. Like, I remember flying back home from that trip. I'm like, dude, if this plane crashes, I'm good. I'm not <laughs> like, that was like my dream. Like, I I got to go film professional skaters. Like, it was it was such a surreal moment. It will always be surreal. But that's how the job came about when I got a job at the barracks. And uh, what was the second question again? Or the second half of it? I was just like, what was it like? Yeah, what was it like? Yeah, yeah. It was it was unreal. It, yeah. And it was just, it was still like in that era of skating when skating was sick, right? Like 2010, 2009, like before things really changed, in my opinion. But like, so it was such an awesome time to be there. Yeah, it was rad. I remember like fawning over the barracks as like a young lad. Like, yeah, just like holy shit, like that is so fucking cool. Yeah, like, like, a, a private skate park, and like, yep. I, I knew back then, like, I wanted to be a filmer, and so I was yeah. like, I think I genuinely emailed like the media person, whoever it uh-huh. was back then. Yeah, like, yeah. hey, if I'm like in yeah. the UK, you know, just like if you need anything filmed over here, I must have been like 13 or something. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Just like yeah. if you need anything, I don't even think <laughs> I had a camera back then. But it's just like if yeah. you need anything done, no, I'm your I'll guy. I'll do it. I'll do it. Like far yeah. so far away from London, you can barely see it on the map. <laughs> it's like <laughs> god damn, what was I thinking? That's so cool. Though. I love it. Talking to actually, this uh, this was something I was going to ask earlier. When did you get your first HD camera? First HD camera was um, the HVX, and I think that was right after I had quit working for the barracks, and I got the HVX, 
and then started filming for like Corey for Pretty Sweet. Actually, maybe it was right at the tail end of working for the barracks. Yeah, I was still working for the barracks. But yeah, I bought my own HVX. That thing weighed like 30 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that was my first one. And then sold that one because Jason Hernandez was selling his HPX. So I bought Jason Hernandez's HPX off him for oh, like wow. a grand, I think, and sold my HVX. And I actually sold my HVX to this other filmer who was in Auckland, New Zealand, surprisingly, with my last name being Auckland. And he bought my HVX. And then I've had the same HVX forever now. Yeah, still running it. The LCD, the LCD shot, I got to get that fixed. But yeah, still running it. So you own H- Jason Hernandez's HBX? Yeah, the Holy HBX. That, shit. That, that film Chronicles 2? Yeah, I think it's, yeah, yeah. I, so should, I, I, guess... should get, I should get him to like sign it or something like oh, just like so and then cool. like once I'm done with it just save it you know just like put it on the shelf and that was so fucking cool yeah yeah dude yeah. I know there's Jason's... a guy yeah. I, I want to get Jason on here as well yeah yeah like he is so fucking good I know his HD filming just like is so good in my opinion just like his transitions and just like it's so good and I just yeah I I try to like always try to like be as good as I can be, but like, you know, strive into that level. And I think everyone should always, I don't know, because I feel like a lot of people just kind of taper off. I'm like, ah, I'll just film like this. It's like, no, just <laughs> keep, keep trying to, you know, always keep trying to progress a little bit. Yeah. I've been I've been loving his like old Transworld tapes. Yeah, so good. So yeah. good. So cool to see all that. Like, yeah. I, there's like one line he did, um, I think he filmed it with Leo, and it like uh-huh. starts off from like a ditch, and he goes over the grass, pumps it, and then Leo does like a yeah. th- like a front side flip or something. I was like, holy fucking shit, that's how you film. Yeah, totally. And I have so much respect to people who film transition skating and bowls oh, yeah. and stuff. Like, dude, those filmers should get paid double. Like, that is oh, for sure. crazy to, to get good at that. Yeah. I know, like a lot of them tend to use like the DSLRs because they're lighter, and that makes yeah, sense. Yeah, totally. it makes more sense. Totally, yeah. I want to see someone with the HPX. <laughs> oh my god, Fully... so nerve wracking. Yeah. Wait, John Minor. Yeah, dude, like he gets in there too, right? Yeah, yeah for sure. Yeah. And Mike Missouri. Yeah. That's dude. It's so it's it's insane. Yeah. Also, yeah, the goat, the goat. Yeah, the goats for sure. Alex Patters. Please, people, get some better Instagram names. No offense, like I can't read some of these. <laughs> Alex Patters Splash, there we go. HDVX pros and cons. Um, so far, what I've learned about uh, modifying the Mark One to put on your HPX um, is that in low light, like if you're filming at night, the focusing is horrible. You have to have a really powerful camera light to really get good lighting and the focusing gets better. So far, that's like the main downside that I've experienced with the, doing the Mark I on the HPX is that focusing issue, which I've experienced. Maybe I'm doing something wrong, but I think I'm not. But that's the one thing I've really have learned from that. Okay. And yeah. that's like the main one. Yeah, I, yeah, I think so. Yeah, yeah. And I've, because I did try the VX Fisheye Sales adapter ring that they made, and I tried the one that I made, and it's, it's the same thing. And so, like, and they both have the same focusing issue in, in super low light situations if you're filming at night. But yeah, I did learn just to have a really nice bright camera light, which will help for that. Hmm. Actually, what camera light are you running? Uh, just like a basic like uh, LED one, nothing fancy. Um, I forgot the actual brand or whatever it is, but you know, it just takes a VX battery on the back, nothing crazy. But I definitely realized if I am going to keep, if I do want to keep doing more like projects with the H with the HPX and the Mark One on it, like probably going to try to invest in a little bigger of an LED camera light that's a little brighter to help with that focusing issue. Okay, yeah. You, oh, I see. I I've never had the um, those old Sony lights. You know the square ones. Yeah, the yeah, bulbs. the old ones. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, like everyone used them, but apparently they were dog shit. Yeah, <laughs> like, they weren't that bright. We had some at the barracks when I was working there. Yeah, they weren't that bright. I remember seeing yeah. like the second angles. Like that thing is tiny. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Not producing too much light. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> so we got one from Daniel Wheatley. I recognize that name. Yeah, Wheatley, what up? Worst thing about the skateboard industry? Worst thing about the skateboard industry? Oh, I, can, um, I can think of a few. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to hear your opinion. Um, worst thing about the skateboard industry? I mean, one thing that comes off the top of my head is just like, I think it's changing for the better, but definitely just kind of how sexist it was with like girl skaters and things like that, you know, and things are, I, they're getting in a better place, but that's just one that comes off the top of my head. Like that was pretty whack back in the day growing up and like 
the homophobic stuff and all that like that's just all got to go but i think it's in a better spot now but there's still it still does exist but it's getting better but that stuff was pretty whack for sure yeah, yeah. absolutely but what, I mean, what, what, what tell me some what you got what do you got too that you think honestly it was going to be kind of the same it was just going to yeah, be like somewhere in that zone lack of proper female representation yeah, the fact yeah. that women's contests paid less yeah yeah than male contests totally totally and just the fact that like i can't remember who said it I feel like a dick it was like um oh like feedback ted was there jerry sue like that thing like uh-huh. the secret yeah. tape was there a couple of days ago yeah um, yeah someone said like are you putting me on the team because you think I'm sick at skating? Or are you putting me on the team because I'm a girl? Oh, totally. There was that was totally happening. Like when when Nora popped off, all the other companies were like, oh, we need a Nora. So they're just like all grabbing these one girls, like put on their teams, and like yeah. it's it's got like it's sick that they are paying a girl skater, but then it kind of sad that they weren't doing it from like the heart. You know what I mean? From yeah. like the it was just like a trend. But at the same time, I'm hoping I feel like things are getting better too. Yeah. I mean, talking Fingers of which. Yeah, for, for sure. I mean, yeah. I want to give a shout out to one of the OGs that I know, which is um Lisa Whitta- uh, Whitaker. Oh, yeah. Literally, she, uh, uh, Kristen Ebeling's my good friend. She's pro for uh, Meow Skateboards. Uh, yeah. Lisa just picked her up. Kristen was actually staying at my apartment. She's in town. Oh, nice. Oh, so, yeah. Lisa was probably just here while we were talking. <laughs> like, Lisa, I, I um, found out about Lisa when I was like 14, and I like, yeah. watched v- uh, Villa Villa Cola found out about uh-huh. meow and like all that stuff yep. i was like that was like 2013 or something I was like i've always been like a fan of what they've been doing i think it's yeah, sick yeah. that they're representing it and it's like finally starting to see some good progression but it's like still yeah. a long way to go yeah totally yeah yeah lisa is seriously one of the biggest goats in la like Such yeah, a she's, fucking OG. she's helped out so many people mega shout out yeah, yeah. stretch de phil i'm not sure if i'm pronouncing that right how is VX rental prospering? Not sure about that. What's that about? I actually, um, yeah, so Grant Ian Asura from Weekend, he told me about this. Uh, it's called sharegrid.com, and you can put your camera gear on there for renting. And it's all insured and stuff, you know? And, like, he's like, dude, some people are putting their VXs with the digital recorders, like, on there. Like, it could be some extra side money. And I actually listed on there. I haven't got any bites, but I did just get a bite the other day, the first time someone actually wanted to rent it. For like this uh, music video they were shooting, they wanted that, you know, VX footage, retro footage, whatever you want to call oh, wow. it. But he was uh, this guy from Canada that was in LA, but I don't think ShareGrid accepted his Canada ID because you have to put in your ID. He's just got to be all legit. And so it didn't pan out, but hopefully it does pan out to make a little extra money if I'm not, you know, they can rent out the VX. And yeah, hopefully it doesn't break, fingers crossed, but it is all like insured and it's like a proper website. So, but yeah, it'd be nice to make a little side money. That's kind of cool. Actually, talking yeah. of like um, projects and stuff like that, someone I interviewed who actually asked you a question, um, Jude, he has shot like gigs with the VX and like a Mark totally, One yeah. and shot music videos with the Mark One and like the VX and stuff. It's like, have you ever thought about trying to get into that field and yeah, you know, make a bit sick. of money? Actually, yeah, actually, um, Daniel Wheatley, who just asked a question a second ago, he's uh, he's been working in the industry for a while. He was like the manager for the Palace Store and he used to work for Crail Tap. He's a friend from Florida. But um, he is uh, he he like dates. I think this chick who's like a model or an actress. But I think he's gotten gigs through her for filming behind the scenes of photo shoots for models and stuff. And he the first one he hit me up. He actually he was like, "Hey Shane, could you log a tape for me?" And I was like, "Yeah, I'll, I got you." And because I don't think he had like a proper cap cam or whatever, and didn't want to like to glitch. And I logged the footage for him. Ended up being like a photo shoot with Haley Bieber, Justin Bieber's wife. And he, he filmed it all VX, just like some B roll footage, you know, like. And I'm like logging this footage. I'm, I don't even know who it was. My roommate at the time's like, yeah, that's Justin Bieber's wife. I'm like, wait, what? Like, <laughs> and so I've actually done this for Wheatley a few times. He's brought some tapes over and I've logged the footage for him and stuff. But yeah, it'd be, uh, yeah, Wheatley, if you ever need a second VX angle, like I'm down to hop on the shoots or whatever. Get on <laughs> Make that shit, yeah. Side money. yeah. But yeah, it's, it's funny to see like these companies wanting that VX footage for, you know, behind the scenes or whatever. That's kind of sick. <laughs> for sure. It's so doable though. Like people yeah, love right? that yeah. kind of aesthetic. Totally, yeah. And like, I mean, everything, the whole retro vibe's in. Like, people dress from, like, they're the 90s, baggy pants are back. Like, it's totally, it's in. Yeah, literally, yeah. Time, yeah. Get your money while it's in. Yeah, exactly, yeah. (laughs) Uh, You, you, I mean, you use, like, lots of little bands. Have you ever thought about making music videos for them? Yeah, I'd be so down. That'd be fun. I've never really got to do, like, a music video, but, I mean, I love music and, like, yeah, that'd be really rad to, like, hit up a band and be like, hey, like, do you want me to shoot something or, like, help me out? Like, I could bring some ideas to the table. That'd be rad, yeah. 
and you never know like could be like a good fucking yeah little side thing going on exactly another yeah gig to keep it going another question Giacomo's Giacomo's asks any good VX repair resources beyond the 10 videos on YouTube and a service manual the VX repairs uh dude there should be yeah it's funny because it would be sick to have some VX repair videos on YouTube more, but then I know like there's guys who like you got to send it to them to fix it, so they don't want to leak out their secrets. But <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, it's doable. So yeah, that would be kind of cool. Yeah, or that could be a sick uh, Patreon thing too. Like pay a couple bucks and you'll get a little tutorial video how to repair certain things that break. Yeah. So I've got one other thing I want to do. I haven't actually done this with anyone, but since you are the first American on the yeah, podcast, yeah. I want to do something quintessentially British. Yeah, totally down. So what what we're going to do is a game called Mastermind. So it's a, it's a TV show on the BBC. Uh, yeah. If you want to quickly Google or go on YouTube and type in the Mastermind theme tune, you'll get an idea uh-huh. of, what, of what we're going to do because you'll get a vibe from just the theme tune alone. All right, well, I'm, I'm in, I'm in. What's your name and where you're from? Uh, my name is Shane Auckland. I am from Machias, Washington, originally, but I reside in Los Angeles, California. And what is your profession? Uh, I film skateboarding and I also work as a handyman. Excellent. Right. You've got 60 seconds to answer one, two, three, six questions okay. on the topic of skateboard videos and MISC. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So in three, two, one. One, go. What was almost the name of Chomp on this? Uh, pass. <laughs> Chew on this. What was the first skate video to use a HD camera? Oh, was it Skate Fairy? Was it Ty and Skate Fairy? I guess that's not really a full video, though. 40 uh, seconds. Pass. I failed. Go. Rock Audio. Rock what is Audio. The... What... Yeah, audio video. Uh, what is yeah. the name of the brand that released the Overground Broadcasting video? Uh, I'm failing past <laughs> <laughs> Far Eastern Skate Network. What is the? Uh, this might be a bit easier. What is the name of the creator of the Static series of videos? Uh, dude, I'm so bad with names. <laughs> we just we just talked about him. Uh, Josh, right? Josh Stewart, correct. Yeah, yeah. In yeah. what year was the Mark One released? Oh, dang, that's one I don't know. Uh, I'm just gonna go with uh, uh, 1988. Correct. Yeah. Who shot the first ever skateboard trick with a Mark One? And time's up, but you can answer Dang. it. You can uh, answer it. First one that ever shot with a Mark One. Ooh, who was it? I'm just gonna throw a random name out there, and just go with Ty. I don't know. <laughs> Dan Wolf. Dan Wolf. Dang. But, oh man. Well, no, thank you for good. playing Mastermind. <laughs> no words. <laughs> Fuck it out. Oh, maybe I won't do that again. <laughs> no, that was sick. That was sick. I did. I seriously only thought of doing that like two minutes before the call. Nice, nice. And I was like, "That's genius!" And so I was like, "Oh, think a question, think a question." And then you came. I was like, "Oh fuck!" Trying to get some in. No, that was good. That was sick. That was tight. Well, I've run out of questions. I mean, if there's anything you want to ask or talk about, um, I think yeah, we dove in. We hit a lot of good stuff in there. Um, one of the fucking Liverpool homies hit me up about. Like when I put the post up about interviewing you, yeah. um, uh-huh. Dominic, that's his name. He was like, oh, when I post, oh, the goat. I've always watched skate rap videos before going out. My teenage year, my teenage years was that shit. So shout out, hey, Dominic. Hell yeah. Thank you, man. I remember that, um, what's that skateboard shop in New York? You know the really tiny one that's run out that guy's house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't recall the name, but I know of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'll have to put a link to it in the description. Yeah. But he, he put that... Um, Instagram video up, and it's like, respect the fucking filmer, he's out there with you, yeah. busting his ass, that kind of thing, you know, give, him, give him a board, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah, buy him lunch, like, yeah, yeah. Buy him a fucking drink, get him some water, you know. Yeah, Just totally. Absolutely, and it's like, it's, yeah. it's taking its time to get there, but I think, you know, maybe one day we'll get there. Yeah, totally, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. And it's funny how it's like an unwritten rule that the filmer, like, has to have, like, a van, has to have the rub brick, has to have the bondo, has to have the broom, has to have the leaf blower, like the bolt cutters, like all these tools for fixing the spot, creating the spot, finding the spot. And like, 
why is it the filmer's job? Like you think the pro skater who makes the big bucks should have all that equipment as well and going out there, finding the spot they want to skate, fixing the spot up and then be like, hey, to the film, like, yo, I got a spot. Let's get it on Tuesday at noon or something like and it's like I you don't see that that much. It's really interesting how it's an unwritten rule that the filmer has to do all these job titles and wear all these different hats and like be a, be a team manager at the same time while filming. Like it, that's something that I feel like a lot of people haven't really thought about that could get discussed more and hopefully pro skaters think about that a little more. But that's an interesting thing. I mean, I'd like to see it brought up on the nine club. I mean, that's probably one of the yeah. at least top five, like biggest yeah. skateboard related podcasts. Totally. Yeah. And even like, I don't, I don't know a, like a pro skater who owns a generator and lights. Like, it's like, I don't even know a for skate photographer that owns generator and lights. Like, it's all on the filmer. It's always on the filmer. That's a very interesting thing. And too. it's like, and it's assumed that you will have it. Yeah, like, oh yeah, he's got generator lights. Like, uh, that costs a lot of money. <laughs> like, well, yeah, yeah, running a generator in this economy with fucking pr- the prices for gas and petrol or whatever. Yeah. Know? Not to mention they break down all the time, so you got to know how to fix it. Like with my generator, I've had to fix it like five times. Like, keep it running. But I've also migrated to uh, LED lights. I take all the VX batteries, and they're good. I mean, they're not as bright as a generator can light up the spot. But they make they make ends meet for if you're in like a pinch where you got to light some up quick and then get out and not have a generator making a bunch of noise. But but yeah, it's an, it, that stuff's interesting to think about. I mean, it's way. I mean, for me, it's like I went from just thinking, oh, I just need a camera to like I like my backpack is huge now. Like, yeah, I I bought like two crowbars. Yeah, I should. Yeah, totally. I, it, no human unless they're like needing a crowbar for an actual use that yeah, isn't yeah. somewhat illegal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shouldn't yeah, yeah, be yeah. buying a fucking crowbar and carrying it around because it's classified <laughs> yeah. as a deadly weapon. You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All skateboarders are all going to jail. Exactly. <laughs> if you get yeah. pulled over, you're going to look like the shittest bank robber. <laughs> oh, totally. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Generators, crowbars, all these yeah. like tools and stuff. Like, what are you yeah, like, doing? Yeah, what do you have to? We're like, I'm just trying to play on a piece of wood with my friends. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I like film I skateboards. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, cool, we've heard that one before. You're going to prison. Like, you're like dang it. Yeah. No, it's it is funny, yeah. And I we definitely have like construction vests, and I've made those skate rats like construction. Oh my god, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Just to try to blend in. If you do, gotta like get some knobs off a rail or whatever you gotta fix up, just to try to not get yourself caught by the cops. But yeah, I've been, I, yeah. Should be on a dead like good morning, just you know, fucking yeah, exactly, shoveling yeah. it off. I'm just I'll, you just gotta act like you're supposed to be there. Just keep that demeanor, and like you're supposed to be, then you'll be fine. <laughs> I think like the traffic cones thing as well, you know, could have blocked yeah, it off and whatever. Totally, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've definitely have had some, stolen some traffic cones <laughs> and used them for like spots. So like, yeah, I learned I learned that from my dad. Now, <laughs> <laughs> or, or he he, uh, my dad, my family side on my dad are all like loggers from the northwest and like. He had a tree service company, so he cut trees down for people. And but yeah, he would you know have cones and mark it off when we're falling the trees down and stuff like that. So yeah, I always had a couple cones from him, but using for skating if we need to block something off or whatever. Wouldn't it be an idea to like? Because I'm guessing like, do they have like different like little council slash government type things for the different parts of LA? Yeah, kind of. There are like little yeah more local government stuff, but yeah, it'd be interesting to. It's one thing is I don't know what the law is too because there's like in LA there's like old skate parks that are like the city skate parks like the Culver City skate park and like in those skate parks you have to wear helmets but then there's like other skate parks like Stoner Plaza and these like more plaza skate parks and there's no rules there you don't have to wear helmets and I've always thought like within the city government or whatever the why do these skate parks have to wear helmets but these ones don't they're literally the same thing kind of you know but I've always wondered like what I'm sure it goes back into the local government but yeah that's something that's always kind of made me think about. Hmm. I was thinking maybe you could just like get the logo of the local government, put it yeah. on one of those high vis jackets. Totally, yeah, yeah, totally, yeah. Literally, <laughs> and then yeah. All, the world is your oyster. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I work for the city of Culver City or the city of Venice or whatever. Yeah, yeah here's my idea. It's just like a blockbuster video. <laughs> Dude, people have ran that. I know pro skaters who have um, they've printed out papers for like um. <clears throat> for like I'm allowed to film here like these like agreements like for the city of LA they have permission to film here printed out totally fake and just presented to security guards and I think it's worked like no we have like we're allowed to be here they feel a brand ran up it's so genius I love it I was just gonna say it reminds me of um 
one step beyond, like um, Josh Stewart's uh-huh. nightclub, and he's like, "Yeah, we're all like yeah. faking permits to get like yeah, Jeremy totally. Ray's yeah, yeah, free, yeah. like back free, front free." Dude, like, oh my it's God. Uh, I love it. It's so genius. It we're, we're such psychos. We love skating so much. I love it. <laughs> Like, try and tell anyone that isn't a skater. Yeah, so I got a a nearly 30-year-old camera with a lens that costs more than my car, which is full of definitely not suspicious tools where I drive around with a bunch of sweaty motherfuckers who definitely need to shower more often. And I film on tapes, but sometimes I don't. And... (laughs) I don't get paid nearly enough. My back hurts, and yeah. uh, I do it every weekend. <laughs> and that's going to be my new bio in my dating profile. <laughs> <laughs> you joked about it before. I was like, so have you actually told dates about you know filming? Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, past girlfriends and stuff. Like, yeah, for sure. Yeah, like, yeah. If we dive into it, we go on a couple more dates. You know, that tell them more about me. But yeah. Well, usually, I mean, that's the deal, deal breaker. Like, if the chick isn't really into that or, like, thinks it's, like, kook, then, ah, you're next. I'll find one who actually enjoys my company and is interested in my hobbies, you know, like, try to find, find someone who's down for the cause. <laughs> so, when are we, so when are we starting this union then, Shane? Dude, let's fire it up. We're, we're making moves right now. This maybe, is I, maybe I should make that post. Yeah, make that post. I'll, I'll, I'll repost it, too. It'd be sick just to, yeah, get, have people get some eyes on it, see what they think, you know, start, start that chatter. God damn, maybe I should. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I can't think of anything else to say. Have you got anything you'd like to say or ask or whatever? Uh, I think that's about it for now. Till till the next time. Who would you like to see on? Uh, next time, dude. If you could get if you could get Jason Hernandez on there, that'd be so epic. <laughs> you think you could put a word in? <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I could try to plug it. Yeah. I mean, I don't think he uses Instagram too often. So yeah, I don't, I don't think he's. I think he's a bit off the grid. But if we could make that happen, that'd be sick. Yeah. I would trip balls yeah if i could even just not even just for the podcast just chat with him yeah totally right yeah yeah god damn Dude, like that easy yeah. handle thing yeah that too yeah i still have mine somewhere it really? might be actually in that dresser back there there's a bunch of camera <laughs> gear in that thing right now yeah i still have one yeah one of the first ones yeah wow those yeah. things are like that's how you do it with a dslr yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. Genius. Yeah. Have you actually ever filmed a video like for skating? Yeah. Or a DSLR? Uh, when before I got the extreme, um, I was doing a Canon 60D with the fisheye and that with the, Jason's handle as well, and it had like an external mic plugged in as well. I was doing that, but that was it wasn't a the Canon 60D is not full frame, so it wasn't like the best quality, but it worked for what I was doing. You know, trying to experimenting with first time doing like 16 by nine fisheye filming and you know, learning that as well. So yeah, it was fun. Before we wrap this up, can I have a look yeah. at your extreme? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll grab it real quick. That thing's fucking massive. All right, ten thousand dollars in my hand. No. Jesus <laughs> Christ. <laughs> that is insane. Like oh. I, Yeah, it's, it's so barbaric, you know what I mean? In this day and age with like how advanced these phones are and like And the phone's probably wider. Yeah, probably, yeah. <laughs> That yeah, it's just... got, yeah, it's got a couple little dings, but um, it's fine. For, footage still looks good with this thing if I'm, when I'm using it for like other projects, you know. God damn. Yeah. <laughs> I did, I've, I've only ever seen one in person, and I, God, I think Vans came over to do like a tour. Uh-huh. I can't. Rem- I don't know who was filming for Vans at the time. I don't. Re- I, I recognized. No, I remember who it was, but I can't remember his name. And he was filming next to me. I had a DVX at the time, and he had like uh-huh. so. It was like me with my DVX and him next to me with the HPX. Yeah, and yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. Like, <laughs> shit. Just like <laughs> yeah. trying to not get in his way, but like stare uh-huh. the fuck out of it. Like holy fucking shit. Yeah, That's yeah, the- no, totally. And like back then, that was like that. There was no like red or whatever. You know, like yeah, that yeah. was the business. Like, ooh, exactly, yeah. Yeah. Oh, God damn. Cheers for doing this, Shane. Yeah, of course, man. Dude, so stoked. Thanks for having me on. Appreciate it a lot. Oh, fucking hell. No, I this oh my god, this is like the longest one. Dude, I love it. Four oh That's... four hours and twenty minutes. Getting there, yeah. Hell yeah. We'll keep it running. <laughs> fucking weed minutes. Right. I'm gonna bounce because I've got work in the morning. Oh yeah, dude, yeah. Could get back to the nine to five. You gotta love it. But, uh, dude, yeah, thanks for having me on, man. I appreciate it. Dude, let's let's keep them going. Let's get some more people on and get, like, a bigger chat or something. That'd be rad or something sick. Cool, man. In a bit. Cool. All, right. All right, sounds good. Later, man.